Hey everyone, hey and welcome back to yet another episode of Battle Rap Resume. This is your host Tom Quee. Before we jump into today's guest, I just want to say please check out our Patreon. Uh, Battle Rap Resume is now on patreon.com forward slash Battle Rap Resume. That's where you can help support the show. If you you know want to give back, all the money goes straight back into the show, straight back into uh, funding new equipment and new ideas. You can go on there and get exclusive episodes that won't be released on the YouTube or the podcast feed. They'll be only on the Patreon, that being like resume review, various you know recaps and stuff like that it'll also be previews of episodes you can listen to episodes you know a couple of weeks before they come out in the main feed as well you can pick up t-shirts you can get me out of retirement someone has already done that um but yeah there's some videos on the youtube channel as well if you want to know more about the patreon also please leave a review if you want to help the show out it would be just as useful if you could leave us a review on iTunes that helps to push us up the algorithm and it's greatly, greatly appreciated. And of course, all the other stuff that I say at the top of the hour, that being at Battle Rap Resume, please follow us, please subscribe, whatever platform you're listening to. Please go on Redbubble and check out some of the merchandise. But um, anyway, I'm mega excited to get into today's guest. So, Mickey, it's a genuine joy to have you on the show. And um, one of the things that I'm so jealous of you about is not only have you been part of Battle Rap history, you know, you featured heavily, you've created one of the biggest leagues in the history of, of the sport, you know, let alone the UK. Like, you, you guys outshine no coast, you know, in that sense, like no shine on no, no coast, but you know what I mean? They're, they're, they're kind of the equivalents of the same. But, Mickey, you've seen so many battles live as well. What is the best battle you've ever seen live? Um, firstly, thank you for all that. That was very touching, man. Thank you. <laughs> no, of course, man. And big up, thanks for having me on the show, Tom. Of course. And, uh, I've seen all the work you're doing and that, mate. It's a good look, man. It's fucking uh, appreciated. So mm, thanks. Mm. The same to you, man. The same to you. Um, right. What the best battle I've mm, ever just, seen? Uh, just kick it off with, yeah, just top of your head. What do you, can you think? Oh, dude, that's. Yeah. <sighs> Lunacy's tryout was pretty special. Mm. That was fucking great. Mm. Shotty versus fucking Arsenal obviously was ridiculous. I think the best battle I've ever seen live, man. There's some crazy ones already. Oh, that is that is tricky. Do you know what? Chronicle versus Archaic was mm. fucking the best battle I've ever which, seen. Which I've never seen, as most people haven't seen. I mean, we'll get on to the Archaic battle where yeah. you mention that a lot, but... Yeah, interesting that that's the one that you deem so highly as well. Just oh, that no. was incredible. Chris Lee's first center was also pretty fucking dope when mm, I saw mm, it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's when you were kind of ascended to leading the battle stage in Don't Flop, wasn't it? You know, you were front and center sort of thing. Kind of thing, man. Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, that was in the in the in, right in the in the in the in the in the in the heat of my Don't Flop sort of phase if you know what I mean mm, mm. the main like yeah when I was like hosting a lot of the events if I could have made them or co-hosting them with him as well so a great spot to be in especially you know at yeah, such a time it was really good man it was really good time bro a lot of lot of, lot of good memories from them days man I'm not even gonna say anything we'll negative get into that man yeah no I mean it was dope that, that's all part of it but I mean before before we get onto a battle that I'm pretty sure anyone that was there was there He's not going to say it was their favourite battle they've seen live you versus Deadly Nightshade. No offence, you know, but it's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. it's a tryout, man, you know. Uh... Yeah. It was whack, bro. It won. You know what? In truth, yeah. Mm. Go on, so, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go on, say we finish off with No, no, no. I was, just, I was just going to say, you know, before we get to this point, you know, mm. which isn't really that long ago, um, February 2011, so even in terms of Don't Flop, yeah, been yeah. around been around quite a while. I mean, who were you when the WRCs were happening in two thousand and seven? You know that kind of earlier. Were you into battle rap then? Was it something you took up later, Mickey? Or I, I found out basically. I was I wasn't following it then. No, definitely not. Um, basically, possessed lived lived in the same area as me. Hmm. So that's how I knew possessed was from rapping in Croydon. I didn't I didn't know him from. He lived in Crystal Palace. I lived in Croydon so I found out that he was going like you know what I mean across the world to do this battle and all that and he was like this big deal mm. That's that was my first um, when we're basically meeting Possessed and stuff like that and everyone was like this is the guy I didn't even really know then I watched I, I think I watched the final um, and probably maybe a few of the other like heats but I'm going to be honest with you man I, I wasn't really too up on jump off at all Mm -hmm. I was more in them days I was making music and releasing music and playing shows and was that as Mickey Worthless was that your moniker 
It was it was like Mickey, in them days. It was just more. I was more known just as worthless. Mm-hmm. And Mickey worthless was more like. Um, it was kind of like, uh, like, you know, kind of like Wu Tang kind of have more than one kind of name kind of mm-hmm. thing. It wasn't like because it was still like the longer version of the rap name Mickey Worthless because obviously my name being Michael and my mom and my nan and all that calling me Mickey yeah. and then they're like and it was like One Punch Mickey from Snatch and it was like yeah Mickey Mickey Worthless so I had kind of had like the two sort of like there was like like I was always kind of Mick I don't know why I was always like just called myself Worthless on the tracks but the rap name was always Mickey Worthless but I would have been listed more as just Worthless back in them days man but I was like more um had music out and i had a chat i had a single out on channel it was um on channel u mm. and, um it was Our on m started out there man right right the video was on mtv base and it was on mtv2 and it was i had a little moment man it was in like a fucking it was number four in the fucking download what? chart virgin and we were the main we had we had a little label deal going on with um this was like in like 2007 to 2009 really right I basically started rapping in about two 2002 I would say it was started wow. really really trying to write verses before that I used to ride my skateboard and just fucking maybe spit a few freestyles with the rappers that was at Fairfield but not really rapping rapping do you know I didn't have a rap name or nothing I just yeah. come and maybe Probably, do you know what? Spit a few like freestyles just to try and make um, everyone laugh more than make them say "whoa." Do you know what I mean? Just mm. fucking. Well, that, that 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 doesn't change. To be fair, exactly. I just mm. said as I just said that. Then I thought, well, that, <laughs> that explains a lot. Actually. That's what I'm here for, man. <laughs> Reflection. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> so then that was like in like two. Do you know? Even in them days, it was like it just seemed kind of weird to me being a rapper because I used to just oh I was a proper skate rap but I was proper into hip hop and all, all my like not all my mates because half my mates skateboarded but the other half either was rappers or they like spat to garage mm. it was wrong ones basically just doing yeah. just like selling drugs and just doing robberies and all that do you know what I mean so it's like two sort of sides of my life and I just kind of felt like that's why when I really started rapping I stopped skateboarding because it felt like I don't know I've always just been a person I've always just kind of felt like if you're in for a penny, you're in for a pound. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't want it to be, I never wanted to be that dude that was like, oh, I rap and I write graffiti and I write skateboarding and I fucking do fucking break dancing and I do a bit of fucking guitar or whatever. I always found that bread is kind of corny. I don't know why. So I used to freestyle and, and do a few things. And then, and then like one thing led to another. And as I got a little bit older, you know, I started to think, you know what, I do actually really, really fucking enjoy rapping, actually, mm. do you know what I mean? And then it's like the skateboarding started becoming less and the taking drugs started becoming more. And I just kind of felt like making music kind of fitted in more with where I was at at that time. Do you know what I mean? It just seemed to be suit my lifestyle more. And then the actual passion for the skateboarding died out and it just kind of turned into the passion for the rhyming and just like making beats, getting in the studio, do you know what I mean? Getting a show, going to an open mic, like going to, walking around, do you know what I mean? To all the different fucking, you know what I mean? All the different areas trying to sell your little CD, like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I just started mm-hmm. to really get into all that. Mm-hmm. So that's where I was at for like, do you know what I mean? 21, 22, 23, 24. 25 then 25 24 we started getting involved with this fucking like do you know what we shouldn't have done it man like we shouldn't have really done it we i let a girl talk me into doing a stupid idea we signed a stupid little record thing with this like i want i'm not going to call it a record deal it was just more like an agreement but in our head at the time it seemed like i don't know man i always kind of felt it was like an, a, an odd move to do it but we did it and we put the music out we put the single out the battle begins and it was like it's all kind of like a, it looks like the metroid video game the, and that was the video that was on Channel U and on, on, on MTV and all that. That was doing all that. And then after that, in about 2008 and 2009, we didn't really have a solid anything to come. We put a single out and it got a little, a little like, not really, because you don't even remember it, but 
within the industry and the people we were working with at the time and that we started to make a few connections in it yeah mm. but we didn't really have anything solid to follow it up with because we literally put all the money that we had into this one single and so with the with the with the making the video and getting the video to air and shit do you know what I mean so like fucking we didn't really have nothing solid to follow up with then too much time passed and one thing led to another and then around 2009 2010 that's when all the independent labels really started, the industry really started crashing. There was like a big market, the market crash, all the, the the distributor that we were going through at the time, Pinnacle um, Records, which was like the second biggest distributor of independent records at the time in Europe, was fucking, or possibly even the world, I can't remember, it was either the world or Europe, they went bust, like everything started going bust, you know what I mean? Literally everything went bust. All the record stop shops started going closing down, everything went, and then the people we were working with they um, it all came to an end in, in, in the long and the short of it it all came to an end right so it came to around about 2010 now and I'm thinking fuck like I don't know what to do do you know what I'm saying like everything that I thought I was doing and what the, the direction we was working towards is kind of gone now do you know what I'm saying like it, it's, it's fucked do you know what I'm saying and, and like I know and then I went to this open mic and I went there and I was spitting with somebody and it was this Scottish breast called Silver Tongue. Mm-hmm. And fucking, he goes to me, oh, I'm just down in London for these don't flop battles. And I didn't even know what the fuck he was right. talking about, truth be told, man. Like, I didn't know what, and I, you know, you don't want to sound uncool. So he said, oh yeah, 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 right, sick. So I pretended I knew what he was talking about and, I, yeah, and then I went home and looked it up on, on Google it or whatever, do you know what I mean? And then I started watching it and then I watched, um, the first person I saw was Kruger and I remember Kruger from Deal Real Records. Mm. He was um, in the, in like a few open, open mics and a few ciphers from back then, in them days. So I watched his battle and I thought, what? That kid's doing like rap battles and that, do you know what I mean? It's like DK, um, not the girl, the black, the, the black dude, DK, yeah? I watched that battle. I thought, what? I can't believe this kid's battling. And then I watched um, O'Shea. And I thought, this guy's fucking funny. And then I'll tell you what I watched. I watched Tenchu. And he was like, this bear's from South Norwood. That's where I'm from. Yeah. And he was, and he, and he done the, um, it, I think it was Tenchu versus Hindu Rock. And fucking, um, what it was, yeah? It was three rounds freestyle, 45 seconds off the top. And Tenchu was like, a monster man like he still is or whatever but you know what I mean like in them days Tenchu was the fucking monster do you know what I'm saying and I started watching Tenchu battles yeah and I thought yeah this guy is fucking sick so like Tenchu really and truly was the one that really made me think I want to do battle rap in it do you know what I mean like really and truly he was the one who inspired me he was the one from my area he was the one that was like killing it well he was from Portsmouth at that time but he was from South Norwood as well wasn't it yeah that's where he's really from South Norwood and then I thought yeah like fucking um, I'm gonna holler holler the earth and I've been watching the shit and I wanna fucking um, yeah yeah this is yeah I'd never met her previously to this shit I hollered at him I said I want to do like Paul a- McCartney and John Lennon first like uh. <laughs> I don't know about that <laughs> historic <laughs> something like that man this is, this is when fucking brothers in arms <laughs> <laughs> this is when fucking it all popped off yeah so I hollered him and he said we're going to do a tryout event eventually yeah maybe um, that's the best time and all that so I said yeah sick and then I went to a don't flop event on fucking what's it called um when there used to be an old street right. uh, I can't remember the name yeah. of the event and it's been a while since yeah. I've been there yeah maybe it's called Vibe Bar I think it might have been called I don't know yeah but um, yeah I went there watched a few battles didn't really chat to no one or nothing do you know what I mean just went and checked it out yeah went off and then they on about I think it was I think it was like August 28th I think if I remember correctly it was August 28th there was um, a post of the status on Facebook saying we're doing freestyle battles tonight in Brighton if you want to come um, any MCs that uh, uh, want to do a battle come down yeah on beat so I messaged him I said yeah I'm coming and he goes oh do you know what it's, it's not like some big thing you know it's just like um, it's just a little local thing you don't, you don't you, it's not necessarily worth trekking all the way from Croydon for it's not going to be much people or, do you know what I mean I said no nah. I said it's cool I just want to come anyway I'm just going to come and do some battles yeah so I went down and I met her and I met a few other at the head, yeah. And this is when me and her first met, innit, yeah? Mm-hmm. 
And I remember the, I remember meeting him, and I remember saying when I met him and that, I remember just looking at him and shit, innit? Yeah, and I saying, "What the fuck you from and that?" And he said, um, "I'm from Norwich." I said, "No, no, but where you from and that?" And he goes, um, "I'm Indian." I said, "Yeah, I'm Indian as well, innit? Yeah." And I think at that moment we was both a bit like, "Oh right, sick!" Like, cause. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? There's not much Indians, do you know what I'm saying? Like, especially like half Indians, like we are, do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, at that point we started being like chatty and all that. We've done some freestyle battles. I battled Heinz, I battled Prince Kong, and I battled Adam the Rapper. And then I basically, Heinz beat me in it, yeah, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh kind of put me through to the second round because he must have just thought. Let me see what this goo can do more. I've seen a lot of Heinz already in it. Yeah, right, he's right, right. To say, yeah. Let me just put this guy through to give him another chance. And I battled Prince Kong and he choked in it, yeah. So I beat him and then I beat Adam the Rapper and I went to OT. No, I battled Adam the Rapper and went to OT. I went to another OT and then he and then and then he beat me in the third OT in it, yeah. Or the second he beat me in the second OT in it, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was three OTs, yeah, two, that was the first freestyle battles I've done. And then me and her become kind of more chatty online and all that, yeah, messaging each other, saying, oh, what's up and that, oh, I'm going to get you a battle, yeah, tell me, oh, the date's locked in now, I'm going to find you an opponent, it's going to be in January or February, January, can't remember the date, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then basically, it come to, I think it was Blood in the Water 3, when um, Disaster battled, um, what's it called? Sensor. Sensor, and Sensor and Soul Calm battled as well, yeah. And then it comes to like that sort of time, yeah. And he messaged me and he goes, um, "Oh, basically, I'm, I'm wondering if you could help me out, sort of thing. I've got real, I've got all these rappers coming, and I need places where they can stay in London. Do you, do you, you don't have a place they can crash? And I had my own flat at that. This is before I just shared accommodation, all that shit. I just had my own flat. It was, it was a quite a grim flat, yeah. I'm not gonna lie, it weren't a nice place to live, but I had it in it, yeah. So basically, um. I said, yeah, whatever, in it, like, do you know what I mean? So he said, can real deal and his girlfriend stay with you? So I said, yeah, definitely, because I had a sofa bed in the living room and it was just me, in it, so I could kind of just give them the whole place to themselves. Do you know what I mean? I knew no one would be bothered. It would no one be bothered or nothing. Mm-hmm. So then they came to stay with me, and then after that, I was like, oh, safe. You helped me out, whatever. We done the event, and he done his event and all that, and then. Um, yeah, and that's and that's and that's how me and her started becoming friends, isn't it? Because he was like, he knew he could rely on me and stuff when it comes to like helping him do things and helping. Because um, I was absolutely fucking buzzing for Don't Flop, man. Like I was so down when I was in Don't Flop. I loved it, man. Like it was the coolest thing. I just wanted to do it. I just wanted to be doing it. I kind of felt like I'd come to an end of the time, and like, you know, when all this shit happened, what I just explained about with the mm-hmm. music. I'm saying I kind of felt like oh, I don't know where it's going to go from here like that that was all a massive struggle and nothing popped from it and I don't really know where to go from here like do you know what I mean and then this kind of thing came up and I kind of felt like this is fucking sick do you know what I mean mm-hmm. and um, this is where me because like I don't really know where it went wrong with me and her but at one point we was fucking yeah. so close do you know what I mean it was ridiculous but that's it familiarity breeds fucking contempt and all that shit doesn't it but before we get to you know the fallout Deadly Nightshade is uh, your tryout it's like listen man I had to write like a third round for this guy and I was just sitting there like man I can't even think I know fucking shit I'm just sick of this fucking prick in fact fuck it I just burn him with any generic disses shit like your girl's a slag your mum's a whore and all your boys are bitches if you got kids I hope they go missing and if you haven't I hope when you have them that they're born with Down syndrome. Now listen. This is uploaded February 2011, so, you know, very early, as I said. Interesting uh, to say in the intro that both of you are sick on the music tip in reference to what you were detailing earlier. Um, right. So they're going to see how you do on the league. I mean, it's great, Mickey, there's these things that happen in the early battles, you know, Don't Fluff King of the Dot, whatever, that date them in a great way. It could be a reference, it could be fashion, it could be uh, flipping the coin on the phone on his app. Yeah, um, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Which is, uh, you know, a great metaphor, I suppose. Days, man. They were great <laughs> fucking days, bro. I'm doing the fucking coin flip. Right now, I'm putting the iPhone back in the pocket. <laughs> 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 he always used to say that. And I am using the new iPhone 4S, by the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he always used to detail his shit so much, dude. <laughs> 
you know, you say in your first, Mickey, he likes to rap. Uh, this is Deadly Nightshade, who, you know, we'll get to a kind of interesting tryout. Um, not terrible. It's certainly worth talking about. Uh, he raps about kilos, fucking loads, you say. Why would you name yourself after a fucking flower? Right. Well, sorry, are you quoting me bars now? I'm quoting you to Deadly. This is what you say to Deadly right, Nightshade. Right, okay, right, right. Is it, uh, do you know, I've never heard this show before, man. I didn't realise we were going to go and <laughs> Oh, yeah. Right. right, I had no idea. Mate, I would never have agreed to this if I knew I was <laughs> Oh, God, you know, bro. <laughs> You've got me now, bro. All right, let's. Okay, right, right. okay. I'll be, I'll be fair, man. You know, I, these have been fun to write for. Like we spoke oh, earlier, okay. right? Okay. And I sent you a list of battles to talk about, and one of them that you suggested that I hadn't written notes on was archaic, which I really like. That's quite a fun thing to actually read through, man. Your first in that is crazy, by the way. Like, you right? Know. Yeah, I wrote that in the fucking morning, eh? Yeah, yeah. Really, really strong, but um. <laughs> You know, he's like, this is you again to Deadly Nightshade. He's like a fag and drag trying to lure in a victim with the re- hypno, the ready. Um, apparently, Nightshade is a Latin translation for the words Atropa Belladonna. You reveal the same name as a famous porn star. So. Right. This is when I used to do research and shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is when I used to like try and actually write shit for battles. <laughs> I remember the right. I can't. I'm going to be honest. I have no idea what these fucking bars are. Did you? Did, was I meant to look through these battles as well? No, not at all, man. Oh, right. sort of, uh, some people remember. Some people repress. I rem- I can. All right, I can remember. I remember basically finding out we were battling way ahead of time. Mm. Like, I'm talking, like, October or some shit, do you know what I mean? Like, it was, like, three months or something in advance. Mm. Oh, maybe, maybe two months, but it was, like, way, way more time than I'd ever had to prep. And in them days, you know when you don't really... Right, okay, so it's my first written battle. Mm. And you always, like, you've always... Right, before you take your first battle, you're thinking of bars for people. Do you know what I'm saying? Or what you would say if I, if I was going to battle, like when you're sitting there watching it and you're thinking, if I was going to battle Tenchu, I might say this line or, yeah. do you know, it would be a good generic punchline. But until you get your first opponent and you know who you're battling, you don't really know how you're actually going to approach because you can't start writing a battle for nobody. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. well, I mean, you can. I guess, I think that's what people like Sharon do. They just clock bars all day fucking long. And that's how it comes so good off the top. But, until you actually get a battle, like, and you've got your opponent lined up, you don't really know how you're going to approach writing it, right? Because you don't know who the fuck you're going to get. You don't know what, what's, what's going to, what you're going to need to say, or what you're not going to need to say. Are you going to need to come across aggressive? Are you going to need to have to fuck, like, just be funny? Like, there's a million different things. So you don't really realize until you've actually got the task of writing a battle what it actually is going to entail, right? Mm-hmm. So I got it, and then. For a while, I just sat with the idea of just knowing... I'm not one of them dudes that finds out his opponent and starts writing right away, right? I never will be that guy, right? Mm -hmm. So for just however long, I just kind of had it in my head, right, I've got a battle coming up. Okay, sick, I'm on a hype, I'm sick. Okay, dope, 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 whatever, blah, 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 blah. And then I remember thinking, right, I need to actually fucking write this battle one day. So I thought, right, I'm going to start writing. So I remember actually like downloaded his mixtape because obviously neither of us had any battles to watch Mm -hmm. downloaded his mixtape tried to find him on Facebook I don't think he had a Facebook actually I think he had a MySpace or something like that in them days like it was really awkward to write for do you know what I mean so I googled what Deadly Nightshade was and then it's just all like fucking I saw what it was like it was like a flower and that and then I thought well straight away you know flower pansy like <laughs> you know what I mean like Daisy. It's kind of soft like do you know what I mean but <laughs> there's something kind of fucking there like you know like you could do something and then I looked what it was and, it, and then what was it you were just saying that it's, it's had some mad effect of like it knocks you out or some shit right right I, I'm not sure a trope of belladonna so. I remember you were saying something then and it started ringing a bell like oh yeah like I remember like what the fuck it's all about, man? The, pl- the, the plants effect, man. And, and Nightshade, do you recall battling this guy at all? Do you recall his style? I remember it being kind of like, like not the most amazing rapper, to be yeah. honest. He had a like, few, few, few one-liners that, that hit off quite well, actually. It, do you, you know what I said at the beginning about it being a good, him being good on, on, on the beats and that? Mm-hmm. I, and that his, new, his mixtape wasn't actually that bad, like, do you know what I mean? I remember one of my bars I said to him, now you say, I remember saying to him, um, I think I said it to him anyway. I, th- I said, oh, it's 2011, mate. Allow rapping on the fucking... Forgot about Dre beat or fucking still... 
because he was his mixtape wasn't exactly creative, but he could ride the beats. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's someone I would say he was technically good at rapping, but not necessarily very good at writing. Do you is know? There, what I'm is, is there anyone like that in battle rap? Um. Uh, I, I, I <laughs> is that an inflammatory thing to ask? There's probably quite a lot of people like that. Yeah, I it. guess. I guess it is. A, there is a style. I mean, you know, he says, Mickey, when is your Don Mio night, for example, which just uh, reacts too hugely and the crowd do. And, you know, he, he punches. It's not. He's not awful. He's not kind of the most memorable. Do you remember your theory in the second? You talk about the concept of a turd. When it touches the bowl water, it loses 90% of the smell. Mate, I remember thinking that was fire. Like, <laughs> I remember thinking that was so sick. And that bar followed me around for so long, everyone like saying, that was the weirdest, <laughs> most trash fucking <laughs> ever. I remember Jefferson Price always used to get at me about that bar. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> fucking mate, you're a dung nut, bro. That's sick bar, bro. The shit. Smells smells less in the water, yeah. That's why there's water at the bottom of the toilet, yeah. Because when you shit, you don't want to sink the yard out, yeah. So the water takes up all the smell, ninety percent of it. So I dropped his album down the toilet, yeah, because I thought it might be better after that, innit? It might, not, it might stink so much, yeah. But no, it didn't. It didn't really work. Like it didn't really work as an angle, bro. It didn't really work, bro. Yeah, no, that is it. I still like it. I might say it again. I might say it to Blunt Ted on Saturday when I battle him. Fuck it. <laughs> Remix it, man. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No work this time. And, you know, you you say earlier, you try to download his mixtape. Um, you say it, originally his mixtape was a link to the homepage of Mediafire. Um, and he made a mixtape so whack the internet didn't want you to have it and they encouraged me to make music, which is quite nice, actually. Oh, what? It said upload, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah that's not bad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I know, it works. It, it ends the second quite well. And Deadly does a lot of you look like bars, which were huge in this. I mean, they're still huge. But, yeah. you know, he goes to leave. He stops himself. He looks at you. He goes, 118, I need a cab. So it's, you know, I don't know. He looked like Cactus Jack with, fucked a Thunderbird. <laughs> which which Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ned Flanders as well is you know so much kind of you look like here and uh, you know g- good third and you kind of wrap it up really funnily to sum these last three rounds up I'm basically trying to say fuck you alright yeah yeah do you know I think I actually choked and just said that I think right. I was like I think I was off the top you know not off the top top but like I think I just thought you know what yeah I've forgotten I've forgotten what I was actually going to say let me just not fucking mm and like a dick and, I mean? and you know battle um, is judged as is lots of early dome flops are great to see faces familiar and uh, obscure um, the first guy he gives it to you this judge he's called Henry the Eighth. do you remember this guy he's a DJ I think bro right I think he was a DJ man I'm mm. not sure mm. can't remember you can imagine that for, you see in them days you see this was before don't flop was like the big time don't flop yeah it probably wasn't that easy to get a lot of known bods down to judge a tryout event. Mm. Do you know what I mean? A lot of the dudes would have thought, why the fuck am I going to go and watch a tryout event? Do you know what I'm saying? Because it wasn't like as popular as it was now. Yep. So they probably just had to get a, whoever they could to judge it. So there's, if I remember, it's like Henry VIII, I think Lego judged it. Well, I was going to, I was going to say memories of Lego, like, you know, great that he was around this, I mean, he's been on the show, great guy, like, you know, I mean, dope MC. Absolute fucking legend, man. Mm. And sorely, like, people like him just would, would, uh, like, they were short, like, they were so, such a massive part of the scene back then, man, because they were the top guys, but they were, like, very welcoming to, to the new newcomers. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. So people like Lego, they always made me feel welcome at events. And that's where I got a lot of my attitude from because I thought, yeah, man, Lego was always so cool. You know what I'm saying? So I always used to make the new people feel welcome. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm, mm. Uh, Lego, I mean, in his judging, bigs up Kruger Productions. Uh, Kruger laughs off camera. It's just this nice little moment, actually, in the judging mm. that uh, most people might have missed. He thinks you took the first two. The third guy um, doesn't introduce himself, so I don't know who it is. Uh, he calls both you guys lyricists. He gives it to Deadly Nightshade, but he uh, suffers his exit with a uh, gay as fuck name, <laughs> but he still gives it to him, which is, you know, it's honesty. 
right yeah 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 but but you win you win your tryout like did you expect to win you know you'd you'd won so much of that freestyle tournament or were you, was it still a nice surprise um it was more relief i did expect to win in it mm. you see like when i started battling yeah i did have that like i'm gonna be the best battler approach in it yeah yeah but something changed along the way, man. And I started to take a new approach. And then um just felt more comfy. Sort of. I don't know, man. Do you know what I mean? I just yeah. kind of, like, I don't know. Things change. You realise that, like, you don't have to necessarily do what everyone else is trying to do. Sure. Do you know what I'm saying? And, Absolutely. like... To begin with, and when you're finding your feet, you don't really know you know you don't really know how far you can push things in that. Do you know what I'm saying? So when you start to really get into it, I remember do you know what else as well, yeah. Isn't gonna sound weird, yeah. Um all right, so I've done that battle, yeah. And then I've done two more battles after that yeah and I lost my next two in it yeah this is when all battles were judged basically yeah one of them being against Tony D yeah the second against mm-hmm. first one was against Louis yeah and that was in Gla- and that was in Edinburgh mm. yeah and you see in them days I still didn't uh, like I still didn't really know I was still finding my feet in it yeah mm-hmm against Tony and against against Tony and against Thingy yeah I was still trying to find my feet I didn't really uh, I was still learning like the the battle inside of bit of battle rap in it yeah mm. I kind of felt like I was a really good and I still and I still really do feel I, honestly I, to this day I still think I don't think there's many battle rappers out there that can fuck with me on the beat like in a in a cipher in a freestyle cipher or just like writing songs like writing a verse I really think I am one of the nicest in the in England the, where I get all this cockiness and all this arrogance from is because I know for a fact if we all put this battle rap shit down all get in a fucking circle right now put the fucking beat on and cipher I know I'm fucking people up right and just not 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 even on the battle tip just I'm I know I can hold I know I can handle the microphone yeah hmm. but in them days I didn't realize that just because you can fucking rap that doesn't mean you can battle. Do you know what I'm saying? And just because you can battle, it doesn't mean you can fucking rap. They're two fucking... This acapella rap thing is a completely fucking different fucking ball game, mm. right? There was two conversations... There's two particular aspects of when... Of what made me the battler I am now, yeah? After I lost the two battles I just spoke about, right? Mm. I went to an event in Brighton. I wasn't battling. I just went to it, right? And... A don't flop on, and and I was just watching all the battles and that, yeah. And uh, afterwards, me and I was talking and that, and he said, "You know what?" He, he said, "He said the problem with battling, yeah, at the moment, there's too many people are using battle rap to try and prove the fact they're good rappers. We just want to hear fucking punchlines." Mm. And at that point, I thought, right, okay, so like, do you know what I mean? Just going in and rapping better than the other dude doesn't win you a fucking battle. Do you know what I mean? Like, this is when I started to realise that having, like, flows and all that, no matter what you're doing, if you're not fucking cussing the other geezer, yeah, you're not you're not doing the battle right. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you've missed the fucking point of what you're doing. This is a battle rap. Like, battle rap. This is rap. Shout out Daylight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, but that's a different... That's a completely different kettle of fish, but... Yeah, right. In essence... <laughs> In essence, that is the thing, yeah. Mickey, will you battle Daylight on King of the Ronalds? Can that happen, please? Man, if we could afford it. Oh, like, my God. You know what I mean? We couldn't afford it, man. No. But I would no. love to do it. <laughs> what? You never know. Something could happen one day. Something could happen one day. Thinking about future, the future. But I, I, there's no chance in the future, man. No, no. But I mean, you know, maybe this will be a relic when people are watching, you know. 20 birthday weekend and some people were like oh shit they predicted it I don't know you know yeah 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 15 years ago 
But, you know, this, like Mickey, I love kind of looking at the statistics of people's early battle rap experiences. And in 2011, um, you did 11 battles. In 2012, you did like 17 battles. Like, no. you know, you to say that you weren't part of like the Don't Flop Ascension is, you know, you, you completely were. For one, you have thumbnails on Don't Flop pre-logo between the two battlers as it is kind of mostly you know what i mean like right, it's kind right. of you've transitioned that that certain watermark there you know you battle after the tony d and louis you know fame jefferson price im seasling l's culminating in luna which is in the october of the year keep in mind your tryout was only uploaded in february like yeah, right. you know how how the hell man i mean like i'm not saying you didn't deserve it i'm just saying it's just a crazy crazy uh rise it was like right for a starter I knew I was reliable, wouldn't it? Mm. He knew that if he booked me, I was 100% going to be there, yeah? The way me and Tony D came about, the reason I was the guy that battled Tony D is because Press One had no-showed him. They wanted to... Tony D was originally meant to battle at my tryout event against against Press One as a main event battle. Like, basically at a tryout event, but, like, as a main event. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. They, uh, and then they know he no showed and he no showed again and then I can't remember if it was two or three times it was definitely twice though and then on the third time I was like you know what fuck this let's just give him Mickey Mickey will 100 fucking percent be there and he'll try his hardest and do you know what I mean it'll be he'll, he'll do his best do you know what I mean so that's how the Tony D battle came about the Lunacy battle came about because he put up on Facebook who do you want to see me battle next and then because I've been so active and I don't know a character or whatever you know I I can't remember I feel like I can't rem- how many battles had I won and lost at that point when I battled Lunacy I'm not sure but you'd had at least 10 uploads on the channel so you know you, you were very well known no doubt I think at that time I had I remember I beat okay so I beat Seaslin mm-hmm. I beat Jefferson Price Els did you beat? No, I lost to L's. Right. I lost to Lunacy and I lost to Evil Eyes. And I remember them three battles all came in the space of about five weeks. Yeah, and you're right, actually, looking at it. Yeah, indeed. And I was, ta- I was taking, I just took too many battles. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I did actually do, like, in, in hindsight, I think I'd done all right against Luna, innit? Yeah. The yeah. choke fucked me up, innit? Like, the choke, fu- the, cho- the choke fucked me up, yeah. But basically, I basically just knew I was going to lose to L's and, and Evil Eyes because I just knew that. I wasn't prepping for them. I was just prepping for Luna. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, do you know what? Something that's fucked up, yeah? I remember the day before, or like, like when, when, when the day or the day before me and Luna got, or the day when me and Luna got confirmed, yeah? Mm. I, I, I looked at his Twitter following and he had like 249 followers and I had 251. And I remember thinking, yes! <laughs> I've got more followers than that prick, yeah? And then right about that time, this is when things really started, like JME and, and Professor mm. Green and guys started, like, tweeting his battles out and that. And literally about two min- like two days or some shit after I looked at it, I looked again, it was like, Luna sees on 10,000. <laughs> some fucking... Something kind of ridiculous. So, so that was the first battle kind of after his explosion then? Yeah, it was like right when he was like... Like, he was like, don't get it twisted. Like, his tryout come out, and I think he got, like, 6,000 views. or mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. It got a lot of hits for that time, but it wasn't like... But then something happened, and JME... And J, I remember in specific, JME and Professor Green just were absolutely... Loads of other people as well, but them two in particular were really, really, like, going hard for this guy, do you know what I mean? Really, really promoting him and so that's how his shit was really getting like his shit was really starting to take off man and then I battled him and I remember in the way up there we was driving up to Leeds and that and Er goes to me you do realise what you're doing today and I was like what and he goes you're about to go and battle David Beckham (laughs) 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 it's just like why are you trying to make me feel bad about myself and shit do you know what I mean I need to feel good and shit but I went there it was sick like do you know what I mean every all this all like everyone was coming out for him and that like great venue the the venue like oh man Er Er must have regretted not booking a big because he couldn't have foreseen you know what I'm saying people getting turned away at the door and shit because he couldn't uh, the venue wasn't big enough yeah 
Like, it was crazy. I'm telling you, this was fucking crazy. Like, do you know what I mean? And, like, this is, you know, when it was all, he was really doing that West Yorkshire, that WY shit. WY, yeah. It was all fucking coming through, man. Like, do you know what I mean? It was, it was, it was fucking sick. Like, do you know what I mean? Pamphlet Matter went down as well. That was great. Yeah, and the rest of the, and the rest was a tryout event. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. It was good shit, man. But Luna wanted to battle me. That's the thing. That's why that got set up. It wasn't because Er particularly wanted to give me the push. Mm. Luna wanted to battle me because when he posted it online, oh, who shall I battle next and don't flop? As you say, I was already doing my thing at that time and I was one of the favorite kind of people at the time. Everyone was like, Mickey Worthless. So I saw all of the people saying, oh, battle Mickey, battle Mickey. So I inboxed him and said, look, man, I see a lot of people suggest me in it. If you're down, I'm down, innit, man? Like, on a, just in a, like, I got love for you, innit? Because I was, I was always chatting to him, innit? Because I, I met him from his tryout and that, and he was sick, like, do you know what I mean? When he dropped mm. his tryout, it was really good, man. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, like, we wasn't expecting to see this kid just come and kind of just kill it, like, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Bloodstro. <laughs> Shout out to Bloodstro. I know, man. It's crazy. Do you know what the crazy thing is? Mm. You see, that day I battled fame, innit? I battled a tryout yeah. that day, yeah? I could have either battled Lunacy, Bloodstro, or Fame, innit? Chronicle was booking the matchups, and he was just like, look, man, I've got all these fucking tryouts here, yeah? Do you mind battling one of them? And I said, yeah, no, of course not. I said, just give me a battle. Because you know what it was? I w as I said, I was 2-1 losses. You get me, yeah? Mm -hmm. Win two losses. And I just wanted to get the fucking win up, innit? Do you know what I'm saying? I wanted it to be 2-2. Two -two. I was desperate. So I said to Chronicle, yeah, just get me anybody, like, do you know what I mean? Because in them days, the wins are mattered, man. Like, the, the wins and the losses mattered, like, do you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I wanted to get off of being on, like, one win, two. So I said, yeah, just give me anyone. And he said, all right, I'll, I'll give you one of the tryouts because I just need to, like, there's three. There's three people trying to try out. It's an odd number. I said, all right, yeah, just give me any one of them. And he said, what about this one? Fame. I said, yeah, yeah, no doubt. I remember thinking after, imagine if I battled Lunacy as fucking tryout. Things would have been fucking mental, like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> like beat me or I might have beaten him because people might have just been not really do you know what I'm saying like man it could have been so different right, right but yeah right. battling fame that day instead yeah the sliding doors of battling definitely if this match would have went down if you know he, yes. won, he won the title or whatever you know you can speculate forever and I just want to touch on quickly I mean you'd battled Jefferson Price you then teamed up for two consecutive battles as part of the tournament you know you're a really good team actually I felt you know complement each other what was your friendship like at this point I mean to go from battling each other to teaming up who was it strengthening or was it personal or um, was it battle you know political it was just like, listen, yeah. yeah, he made music as well, yeah, and he... He like, skated, didn't he? he? Yeah, he skated, he made music, and he and he he was my age, or he might have been a year older than me, I can't remember if he was right. a year older or, or a year or the same age as me, yeah, and we both got, or he might have even been a year younger, but we were, we were roughly the same age, basically, mm -hmm. yeah, we both made music, and we both started battling late in the game, we'd done a tryout, the same thing, do you know what I mean, me, Pedro, Jefferson Price... And a few others all tried out at the same time. So we all met each other around about the same time. But really and truly, like, we weren't really, uh, we like, as fucking close pals what everyone thought we were. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, me uh, and Kruger were fucking, they were like, I'm not being funny. Look, I'm just going to say honestly what I thought, yeah? Please. I felt Err uh, and Kruger were my friends. I, I thought Err, uh, Kruger and Pedro are my friends. Mm -hmm. And everybody else is an affiliate to me do you know what I'm saying like everyone else is cool but like these lot are my actual fucking circle of friends these are the ones I ring up these are the wings, ones I go for beers with these are the ones I jam with do you know what I mean and then when Double L came along then then Double L was someone I also considered to be but within the dog flop thing man I was cool with everyone and I liked everybody in there or some people I didn't like do you know what I'm saying it was always people I didn't really get along with there's always going to be people yeah, isn't yeah. it but fucking um yeah, Jeff was cool and all that, and like, but we was always kind of thrown together because, of, like I say, we both tried out at the same time. We we're both the same sort of age. We both made music and that. Do you know what I mean? And like, well, I mean, I mean, teaming up against O'Shea and Uno Lavos, for example, awesome. Like opportunity, great battle. Yeah, right. Well, we done that on an hour's prep. That was in the day. That was in like a fucking. Um, that was in a tournament. That was. Mm -hmm, do you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. We should have won that battle, man. We should have gone through. I think. 
yeah, there were some funny moments in there, definitely. Um, yeah, I thought I thought you two you two had it, and it's great to sort of time don't flop yet again because we see in the front Blizzard and Arcane, like yeah, uh, right. uh, you're repping London and Scarborough. Um, peace to everyone is what you say quite simply at the start. Yeah, right. Peace to everyone, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Peace to everybody. And this is way before the I'm big time, right? That, that was a, that, that was a slogan that basically came as part of being like small time. Like, do, 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 do you know what I mean? Like, that came of being like, oh, I'm going to be <laughs> sarcastic right now. But now I'm stuck with it. It's kind of getting out there. The slogan's going off now. It's worldwide. Yeah, I know. I wish that slogan was about in Don't Flop Days, you know. Right, right. That would have been sick. Really cool to see Stig of the Dump in the judging of this one. Um, you know, yeah. great to see that. To go from, you know, no offence to Henry VIII, but to go from that to Stig is is awesome to see. And you just you keep battling, Mickey. You, you, for, for two and a half straight years on Don't Flop, you are... Uh, you know, non-stop, really. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, a lot of the smaller events as well. You know, you know when they're like, oh, in, in these days when they was doing lost, they, in these days, like, basically, I can't even front, you know what I mean? I'm basically kind of, with, with King of the Runnels, yeah, mm. we're kind of doing exactly now, we're kind of repeating what Don't Flop are doing then in the sense of going to new areas a lot. And when you're going to a new area, you kind of just have to play it safe and book battlers that you know are popular on your channel. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they knew that I was fucking one of their main fucking... Like, do you know what I mean? People used to come to fucking events. There was a number of times... Admittedly, both times, both, both times this happened where in Manchester, both times, big groups of people came down to events just assuming that like, fucking Mickey Worthless is going to be battling. I wasn't even on the card. And just saying, fuck it. Do you know what I'm saying? We're not even going to come. We're literally just coming to see you. Like, do you know what I'm saying? And it was just like, that's why you seen that year and I was doing 17 battles. Mm. Like, I've done way too many battles, man. Like, it burnt me out. That's why I've got so many whack performances, bro. Like, there was one time in particular, like, oh, I was just using me too. Like, for two, I was like, I can't keep taking this many battles, man. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. 17 battles is more than one battle a month. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Like it's, it's it's nearly one every six weeks or so. It's it's one every it's two every six weeks. I think that works out a bit, mm. right? Yeah, and fucking no, no, no. Um, or, or just short of that. And fucking um, like I remember seeing flyers and I, and and I hadn't even been asked. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm like, well, I've got a bat fucking guy. Like I don't even know what the fuck I'm gonna say. And that's when I started to just do the I am not prepping shit. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I if you, if you are making me do this, then I am not fucking. I'm just going to go and just have get beers. Like I'm just, I'm just going to go stand on stage, be a fucking idiot for ten minutes, find a fucking groupie, get her back to the hotel, rag her out, happy days. <laughs> like if you're happy with that, Rowan, then I'm happy with that. And he was more than happy with that until the fuck comments started to not be happy with that. And then all of a sudden, I was the cunt. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? So it's like you can't. He was quick to wash his hands off me when he should have really stuck by me because YouTube comments and what actually is going on in the real world are two completely different fucking kettles of fish. And all the hate in the world on YouTube generally means that the vibe in the venue is generally very good towards that person. Do you know what I'm saying? It's all the fucking people that get all the good comments on YouTube that have no fucking fans that actually come to the fucking events. Do you know what I'm saying? That's how it really fucking is, man. And I got blinded by all the fucking... I started to think actually, Mickey's actually a really bad look for the company, but I wasn't a bad look for the company. I was a fucking good look for the fucking company. Mm -hmm. He even said that to fucking me the other night. Do you know what I'm saying? When I saw him, do you know what I'm saying? Ah. He, yeah, he did fucking say that to me. We, we met. Oh yeah, well we, we that was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. We didn't meet up. We didn't mean to meet no, up. It was a UKBL, wasn't it? Yeah, he thanked me for everything in that. He realizes now. Do you know what I'm saying? He fucking realizes now all the shit I said to him. I said to him, I said, you know what, bro? Yeah. I said, we crippled each other, bruv. I said, you know what? Look at what I'm doing with King of the Runnels. Look at what you're doing with Don't Flop. Imagine if we had been doing that together. We'd both be fucking flying, bruv. And he just looked at me, stone-faced. He said, I know. Because he's not an idiot. He knows that we could have been much better off like this. But this is how it is now. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's like, this is how it is. But you're seeing all the creative, all the fucking... Like, how is King of the Runnels 
this crazy little fucking league. It's got 5,000 fucking followers, yeah? It's got fucking... It's got hardly fucking... Like, compared to what they're doing, how have we managed to maintain our buzz with the low standard of fucking equipment we've got? The, the cameras look like shit. Half of the battlers are fucking retards, yeah? The, half of the battlers, I don't even think, have ever even rapped before. Like, it's just this weird, but we keep it going because they didn't realise how much of that I was adding to it until I'm fucking gone. Do you know what I'm saying? And originally, King of the Ronalds was meant to be the Don't Flop Extra League or the Training Days League or whatever it is. Yeah? That's what it was meant to be. That's what I was going to be. I pitched it to him. I had the idea. I want to do this league. It's going to be all crazy with mad editing and it's going to be crowd reaction judge and choking his time and it's going to be a lot more like like Boyman kind of shit and he was like bruv it sounds amazing I said I'm going to need you to co-host the first event do you know what I mean all this shit yeah we're going to do it Bam and I was going to help edit it was all going to pop off yeah so some other shit happens and then he stopped talking to me and then he never ever fucking picked the conversation back up so I said fuck it I'm just going to keep going with it then I'm going to have to just do it off my own thing innit I'll upload it onto my own channel fuck them so I kept doing it and then before we'd had a chance to talk, because I thought, you know what, you can't be a grown man and just talk to me. I'd done the interview with NKE Media, and I was slagging them all off in it. This is when I made it public now. I am not with Don't Flop No More. This is not cool. I don't like Rowan. He's mugging us all off. Everyone's getting bumped. He can't even talk to me like a man. Started saying all this mad shit. Blah, blah, blah. And then after that, that was like, that was like the line in the sand, you know what I'm saying? That was like, yeah, we we ain't, that's the end of it, isn't it? And then the event came, the first King of the Ronalds event came, Kruger came, Kruger came on his own, innit? And I was like, no, I was like, I half expected Ryan to come still because he was meant to be there. But he didn't come. I thought this might be, I thought this. I thought he's even going to show up today and we're going to be cool after this and we're going to make up and it's going to be, or he's just not going to come. And Kruger came on his own. I was like, where's Ryan? He's like, he ain't coming. I was like, ah, it's the end of it then, isn't it? <laughs> And that was it then. I thought, fuck them. I'm on my own thing now and I'm boying these lot up every fucking day. So for ages, we was just on a mad anti don't flop thing. But now we're just doing our own thing, man. Sorry, bro. I've got bare off track, man. I'm just sorry. Oh, man, I want to hear all about, I mean, we'll get into yeah. KOTR, but yeah, no, it's very... Yeah, sorry. I just got well off track then. No, me. man. And like, I'm going to tear you back down to another tangent. I just want to yeah. quickly ask, you about Nash on the Fighting Irish League. Like, crazy that you had, like, you know, an international just over a year in. You visited another league as the visiting guest. Well, I'm going to keep it 100%, yeah? Mm -hmm. I asked them for the battle. Right. I paid for my own flight. Okay. And um, they gave me somewhere to crash. Right. And when we got there, they actually gave all the rappers 50 quid each, which I thought, which was, considering we hadn't agreed it, I thought was a fucking classy fucking touch, Mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm going to keep it 120% you, yeah? Oh, yeah? I got on the aeroplane with no bars, yeah? <laughs> Kr- Kr- Kruger came with me in it, yeah? Yeah. And basically, I said to Kruger in it, yeah, we've got to write a battle on the plane, man, because I cannot knock out three rounds on my own. Like, and, it, and we just sat there, and <laughs> we wrote a battle on uh... the... Me and Kruger wrote a whole fucking thing on the plane, yeah? I did have help. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to pretend, yeah? quite a few of them bars were his bars because we was just on the plane writing fucking bars yeah and then we went there and I'm not gonna lie it was quite terrible my performance but it was just one of them ones where I thought considering fucking 6am this morning on the flight we didn't have nothing yeah it didn't go too badly did it <laughs> do you know what I mean and that is the honest to god truth about that battle I don't even care all right, I need to. I actually have never seen it I was just going through verse track I wanted to ask about the little little jaunt knowing there'd be some uh anecdote and another another battle mickey um fairly early in 2012 cr- crazy good battle against dk like you know uh, one where you really are showing the force of sheer personality to to win a battle hey, real talk yeah that kind of fucking hurt me you know <laughs> why are you chatting to me like that why are you getting raw madam <laughs> you just fucked it up mm. you i was about to give you your first orgasm <laughs> you was gonna be like that crumb oh having jaw spasms <laughs> you know what I'm going to give you one last chance because I know you don't like being a dyke really what it was yeah you said that was early in 2012 right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay so Uno Lavos said he had wanted to battle me so he came over and I'd done the battle with Uno and then 
that was one of my better performances, even though it was one of my worst battles, oddly. Do you know what I'm saying? Because right. it, he was so train wreckish and like it was just a, such a stoppy starty battle because he was doing all the mad shit and all that. And it was just like, but I tried hard in that battle and all that shit, yeah. And then basically, this was when I was starting to be able to choose my opponents if I wanted to, in it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I was still doing a lot of favors, but when it comes to other things, I was able, I had a bit more of a, I could say to her, oh, listen, I had this idea for a matchup, I want to do it. And you set it up, do you know what I'm saying? Like, so that Christmas, yeah, there was this girl, and I weren't really, like, I wanted to be banging this bird, but she didn't want to, she was like, basically in a nutshell, yeah. And she was like, well, tricky, yeah. And I remember thinking one night, yeah, I wish I could fucking battle that bird and tell her what I really fucking thought in it, yeah. I fucking hate these bitches. And then I thought, rah, DK's a bird, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? I'm going to battle fucking DK. So I said to, D- to Rowan, I said, I want to battle DK, yeah. And then I just thought, right, you know, when you battle, like when you meet a bird, you like start off all nice and all that. You're like, oh, hi, yeah, yeah, let me open the door for you. Oh, do you want a drink? Yeah, oh, nice and that. <laughs> you're bringing you all nice and that. And then you're starting to, and then, and then, and then you're starting to think, oh, listen, yeah, am I getting in here or not? Like, do you know what I mean? So that's round two, starting to get a bit more restless and that, yeah? Mm-hmm. And then it's like round three, he's like, oh, do you know what? This bitch makes you fucking sick. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you do have and kind of I'm a just- mini breakdown in the third. You go quite violent. But, but then I realised that is the exact same thing, yeah, as an actual relationship as well. Mm-hmm. The same three stages, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's the same three stages again. When you do meet a bird and you and you start to be your girl, yeah, it's all nice. In the middle, it's all pretending that everything is sweet, but it's not sweet. And by the end, you're just like, oh, kill me now, right? <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, I hate this bitch. Do you know what I'm saying? So then... Ooh. That's three rounds, isn't it? Like, everything comes in three rounds. Like, do you know what I mean? So I thought, yeah, I'm going to battle this bird in that, yeah? But the thing I let myself down on in that battle, yeah, was I had the concept for it in my head Mm -hmm. for ages, yeah? I didn't get around to writing it till, like, two days. Like, before, I remember writing the third round literally... Well, the third round, I just go mental in it. But, like, I remember literally not even really knowing what I was going to do in the third round till the day before. Do you know what I'm saying? I've written the first two rounds. And if you, like, if you listen to how basic... That's the one thing I wish I had took more time. That is the one battle I wish I had took more time writing because if I could have written that properly, if I could have written that how I envisioned it instead of just thinking, fuck, I've left it to this point now, I can either just go for the fucking stupid write some punchlines and just do do the order or I can actually try and do like try and execute the idea I had in my head so I just had to go for the quick writing with all the oh, I'll give you the three quid McDonald's the four quid McDonald's and uh, and 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 all the Tesco bags I can't remember what the fuck I said to be honest right yeah the, 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 but, the, yeah the Tesco gonna get you a fake Louis Vuitton so you can throw away the Tesco <laughs> bag <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 man so like I wish I spent a bit more time writing it, man. Mm, mm. But I just kind of knew that I didn't... I just Because I knew so much what I was going to do in that battle, mm-hmm. it kind of... Like, in the third round, I just went bananas in it. Do you know what I mean? Like, when I started going all mad and all that shit, that wasn't written. But I had written it to the point where I knew I was going to go right and just going to let all fucking I started screaming like why did Lee 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 that was my ex-girlfriend like do you know what I mean <laughs> like screaming at like do you know what I mean it was just crazy and the thing about that matchup was like that wasn't a concept matchup do you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. I had a concept for the matchup but it wasn't billed as girl versus boy asked him out like girl uh, girl turned boy down in fucking social justice warrior fucking do you know what I mean that was just how the match up fucking went down I had the idea to do that DK realised midway in midway from her first half round or I can't remember who goes first I think it's, it's second round it must be she just thinks right I'm just going to rebuttal everything he says mm-hmm. because he's been really nice and she just it's because she's so good at fucking the freestyle shit yeah. she just starts fucking going with what I'm like do you know what I mean it just worked out beautifully like do you know what I'm saying it wasn't planned it was none of that shit it just it just happened so 
even though I had a concept for the matchup, it wasn't like a concept matchup. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't one of these, oh, I ain't trying to t- be like, do you know what I'm saying? But it's like, do you know, there's like all this corny fucking shit where you just think, oh man, this shit's just like all set up and contrived and shit. And you just think, I don't really fuck. I Personally, I don't really fuck with them compliment matchups and I don't really fuck with all the mirror matchups and all the dressing up as fucking Batman and not 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 when definite like when definition invents matchups I fuck with them but when everybody else starts kept copying them I don't fuck with it anymore because I just think that was his idea do you know what I'm saying like leave it to him but all this other shit but that's why that one worked because it wasn't a concept matchup but it had a concept and that's why I'm proudest of that matchup of all my matchups and that's why I won that Don Flop Award that year for the best performance voted for by the fans that they never gave me my trophy for Huh. Yeah, they, they gave everybody else their trophy, but they never gave me my trophy. I never got that. Yeah, still pissed off to this day about that. Yeah, they would all you got accept it. it if it was if it was given though. He's probably smashed it to bit. He probably from <laughs> smashed it. He fucking made a voodoo doll out of it. The lot, mate. <laughs> just before he went to UKBL. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this. <laughs> Yeah, right. Or just uh, after, I don't know. But, I mean, I like, at, at, at this point, Mickey, did you have much say in the staff? Did you ever have much say? Were you ever staff, quote-unquote, or...? You know what, yeah? I was staff when there wasn't a... Right, yeah. when there wasn't a staff team, yeah, I was staff, yeah. And then as soon as you got into... The, as soon as the company got big enough to start paying people and, like, giving people positions in the company, that's when he started to cut me out. Because he saw how popular I'd become. And he was getting jealous of the fact that, like, this was his baby, isn't it? Yeah, he wants to be the main man, in it? You know what the fucking laws of power and all that and all that don't outshine the master? Mm-hmm. That's what was happening. Not necessarily as a fact who was the better battler, but at events, he's got the attitude of, um, he's got the reputation and, like, you know, everyone thinks he's stush. Like, do you know what I mean? No one wants to chat to, like, he gives us this vibe like he's above everyone. And at events, I'm there getting down with everyone. Like, do you know what I mean? When the fucking queue is a mile long outside fucking um, to the test 10 and there's like a hundred fans waiting to get in and it's snowing, yeah? Mm. And Mickey Worthless comes out to come and chat to all of them one by one and all that, yeah? That's cool getting yourself fucking... I wanted to do... I didn't do that to be a fucking ask it. I did that because that's who. I, that's the kind of person I am, yeah? Mm. They're waiting to get in. Some of these kids ain't even going to get in. Some of these people come to see me in it, Yeah. Quite a lot of them, quite frankly, are hyped to see me when I go out there and see them, yeah? Mm. So I go out there and say, what's up to everyone in case I can't get in, yeah? Uh, walks past the queue. Do you know what I'm saying? I stop and fucking give everybody daps and that. That's the difference. So he's getting all this reputation and then more and more people see, because I'm helping him so much, like, doing the door, like, taking money on the door, being the one that drops the fucking flyers, going out being part of the flyer team, being the one to fucking drop the fucking posters at the venue, hanging posters at the venue when he can't make it, putting battle rappers up at the fucking house, putting six battle rappers up at the fucking house at one time that have all flown over here. Who, off their who have you had at your, your pad? What's that, man? Who, 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 what battlers have you had stayed at your house? Well, okay. Like, everyone at one point or another mm. from that period of time would have stayed at my house. Sokan? No, Sokan oh. didn't. Um, Sharon did. Oh, wow. Um, what on uh, Nestle. Nestle. <laughs> fucking, yeah. Sharon and Nestle shared my bed. <laughs> they, <laughs> they were so tired and there were so many people at once. There was One time, I'll tell you how many people was all like, in, this is when I had to share. This is when I was, wasn't in the flat no more, yeah? This is when I was in the shared house. And there was like fucking L's. I can't remember what Els' mate's name was now, but there used to be he used to be like a little don't flop character who was on the sidelines, but he didn't battle, yeah. I, think, I can't remember his name, yeah. But it was Els and his mate, Bloodstro, Jefferson Price, Ness Lee, Sharon, and me, all staying in one in like one bedroom at one show. And there was like a there was enough room in the room, yeah, for a bed and a fucking sofa bed to unfold. And then there was like a little patch of floor, and we all had to crash in it, yeah. So Nestle and fucking Sharon just had to sh- just jump in bed together. <laughs> they just had to jump in a bed together, really, because that's how it was. There was nowhere else for them to sleep. But this is how real it was back then. There weren't all this fucking, like, booking hotels and, oh, yeah, there would be got this fucking... This was, like, when it was real. Like, this is... And it was long. But in them days, if I didn't have me putting all these fucking people up all the time at his events, 
he would have been fucked to book these fucking people. He wouldn't have known where to put them. That's why how comes all these people was coming to stay at mine for all these fucking periods of time. Do you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Mm. But everyone from the UK had been there as well. Do you know what I mean? Blizzard, O'Shea, Pedro, Kruger, Double L, uh, just literally everything. Just, mm. it, it was, it was sick, man. It was sick, but it was kind of hectic as well. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Mm. Vital. I mean, I mean, you know, truly, truly so. And like, also, is this the um, in the house tour? I think it's around this time. But like, that was a really fun thing to see you on. That was twenty twelve. So yeah, that this is around that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is when me and her are starting to get pissed off with each other. I think if you really look at, I mean, what what starts that time from twenty ten? Like all the time, and and at this point, I don't know, man. I think you could start start to see like the cracks starting to show. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. if you really look at some of the footage in there man like it was a good time and shit but it wasn't you know like there's 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 bits in that I can't I can't I, there's bits where you don't see me and her in the same place because we were just like at each other's throat so much do you know what I mean we would have a massive fucking argument at least once a day about what? anything like <laughs> I didn't want barbecue sauce on my fucking nuggets, bro. Like, like any fucking thing. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it was just that sort of like, like, I don't know. Do you know when you're like, you know, because I kind of felt like her was my brother, innit? Yeah. And like, here's the thing where me and her had the mutual respect, innit? Yeah. Because like, I used to look at him and think, rah, this kid's clever, innit? Mm. He's got all this shit popping, like, and and he said this to me. Do you know, I'm going front. He said this to me the other night, and I can't even front. He had me straight up and down. Yeah, he was like, "You completely learn everything that you do now from me, like as far as running the league goes." Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And he's right. I, I completely did learn everything. Right? I completely just because because I was running it. I wasn't running it with him, but I was there when he was running it, mm. and I was helping him running it. Do you know what I'm saying? So he's like, you learned so much from me, like, and I and I say, yeah, it must piss you right fucking off, mustn't it? <laughs> it must do your fucking head in. You told me all this, you fucking idiot. <laughs> but listen, yeah. What's the question again? I forgot where it's again. <laughs> Don't. We'll we'll get on to the. Uh... <laughs> okay. <laughs> We'll get to the we'll get to the next battle, but um, this is about I really want to talk about oh, yeah. house tour. That's what we're saying. In the house tour, sorry, yeah. So yeah, let's get back to that quickly. The in the house tour, then you were always battling Enigma, is that right? Yeah, it's me battling Enigma every day, isn't it? Yeah, I mean I, that I, is like you talk about I, all the battlers. Eight, that, yeah. No, it's eleven. It was either nine or eleven times over four days we battled, didn't it? Jeez. Just in random places in front of different people. <laughs> Sometimes in a venue, sometimes in a studio. One time we did it in Mark Suspenses. We went to some backyard wrestling thing with this fucking mad pikey family. Like it was crazy, bro. Like that was some that that was good, but again, it was stressful because we was arguing a lot as well. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what else? Yeah, I can't front. Yeah, I was taking lots of drugs in it, and her doesn't, or he wasn't at least in them days. I don't know what he does with himself now. He looks like he's on fucking heroin or something. I don't know, but fucking. He's fucking. That might have been a big part of us not starting to fall out as well. To be completely honest with you, man. Mm. So mm. a lot of the time when in the house, I was quite smashed. If I'm being honest. Mm. And has that changed now? Or yeah, quite a lot mm. because you can't really get a lot of shit done. Like I can see this is why I can understand why I must have been getting stressed to me because. I was getting to have a lot more fun and he was getting but but then he's making all the bread, isn't it? Do you know what I'm saying? That's what that's the difference though. But while he's like you're being stressed running things all the time and that, do you know what I'm saying? So I was just fucking enjoying all the nights and that and all the fucking free hotels and just the fucking little bit of fucking change we was making from selling the CDs at the event and that getting round I was always paying for my travel and all my fucking accommodation and shit so that was always cool Mm -hmm. so he was always everywhere even when I wasn't battling he used to look after me and shit do you know what I mean even if I ran out of money and that he was buying me food and all that do you know what I mean he wasn't when I say I was tight in that he was tight in it but he wasn't tight with me in it I'm going to be honest about that that is the truth 
Right. But he never paid me for a battle or nothing. Never straight up gave me dough for battling. Do you know what I mean? But he, he always made sure I was all right. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And in, in exchange, you were part of something incredible, you know, that kind of don't flop movement back then. Do you know what pissed him off? Do you remember when I done hats, ASD? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The snapbacks. Yeah. He didn't like that, man. He didn't like that. He didn't like that, bro. We was working on a Mickey Worthless range of, of merch through Don't Flop. Mm. And then at the same time, this, this fucking... Um, Hat pump, this hat company thing popped off for me, in it, yeah. My, I didn't, I didn't start ASD. I became, I came onto ASD when, basically, my friend was like, "Look, man, I reckon if you came on board with my thing and promoted it like it's your company to your, to your fan base, yeah, mm. we can all make some fucking money here." Do you know what I'm saying? And at one point, I was making a nice bit of change off that ASD thing. Do you know what I mean? It was absolutely flying at one point. Mm -hmm. And credit to Rowan, it was because of the Don't Flop fan base, yeah. And it was it, it was because of. But then credit to me in it because I helped build that fan base as well, yeah. So fucking people like me because I'm. You can't make people like someone they don't like, innit? They. I was popular because of who I was, not because I was in Don't Flop. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Don't Flop was popular because I was fucking in it. That's the real reason, yeah? These lot nowadays, they were trying to get famous off Don't Flop. Mate, I'm the one that fuck... I'm one of the ones that made Don't Flop fucking famous. Like, do you know what I mean? I don't question my fucking shit now. But the ASD shit pissed him the fuck off. He didn't like it. I was trying to get money on my own and that. Like, do you know what I mean? And I was getting it, yeah? And then he just messaged me one day, just all blunt, like, we, we ain't doing the T-shirts no more. All right, then fuck it. We ain't doing the T-shirts then, yeah? And then he ordered the first box of... Um, don't flop snapbacks and I said do it through my company Rowan I said come on man we like I'll do you the fucking good deal I've got the big hook up and that yeah blah 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 like basically the geezer I was working with he was an employee of the distributor of um, Mitchell and S and Starter in the UK mm. so he had all the links for everything to do with snapbacks yeah he still does he's still smashing the game right now he don't do ASD no more but his, his current endeavours he's fucking killing it right so we had the big 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 hook up on the fucking thing yeah because we had all the fucking Mitchell and S and all of the starter fucking people like they're working with us we could get their fucking hats their quality hats without their fucking logos embroidered on it and I said to Rowan look yeah we get this fucking shit mad cheap. They're the same quality as Star and Mitchell and Ness. We can get them fucking done easy peasy, blah, blah, blah. He was like, nah, I'm going to get them done. Like, oh, no, I've got my own link. I'm going to go, yeah. He got these bait things done from China, yeah. Like, whack, yeah. <laughs> they come through, they were shit, yeah. And I could tell when he opened the box, yeah. Like, <laughs> they weren't no good. And he, would, he could, like, because he's one of them ones, like, he can't be seen to be wrong in that. He's got, you see, me I'm not I'm like one of them people I don't give a fuck if I'm in the wrong in it put my hands up I say oh shit these are all shit if I open the box and they're all shit they're all shit in it yeah I'll just say it yeah he was like no I think they're sick it turned out he bought a bunch of what um they were like fitted hats they were actually fitted that had been converted right he just scissored the back of them sewn in the seam and then put a snap in they hadn't been designed as snaps in the first place yeah like, you can get these bougie things from China. You think you're getting a good deal. You're not getting a good deal. Like, straight away, if, it's too good, if the price is too good to be true, it's too good to be true. Like, 90 fucking 9% of the time. Like, do you know what I mean? That is the fucking truth of life, yeah? If you buy cheap, you buy twice, yeah? But at this point, this is when things were starting to feel wrong between me and her and that, because he didn't like the fact that his hat sort of flopped and my ones were banging and we had all this because because I was because I was working with this particular breader, I had ways of just making like like we could do very small runs for very cheap. So it didn't matter if a design didn't really pop off, do you know what I'm saying? It, we can we didn't have to buy hundred and fifty at once. We could do five. We could do one if we really fucking wanted. Mm -hmm. We could do whatever the we could literally do what the fuck we wanted. And it was really nice, and I was getting jealous of this man. Like, but he should have been. We were trying to bring him in on it. That's the yeah. truth. He, because it wasn't his flex. Like, he wanted to be the guy. Like, that's his problem. He always wants to be the guy. So that's why that bit flopped. And that's when the. That's really when the relationship started to deteriorate. Because I was thinking, I've made you a lot of money, man. Like, do you know what I mean? I'm one of your fucking guys, and you you don't even want to see me eat. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you really just want me 
and like, do you know what I'm saying? I thought, nah, fuck this. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's that's where that's that's where all that really started to come in. Apart from the other shit, but that's where the business side of it really started to fucking fuck up. Do you know what I'm saying? And you know, quite symbolic then, Mickey, that one of your final battles on Don't Flop is against another of Ur's closest friends, Archaic. <laughs> Congratulations. Heard you're banging Steph now. Good look. <laughs> really nice looking bird. Let's keep it real. <laughs> Battle of the old best mates. Um, yeah, which right. is kind of interesting. Nice to hear colour code everything in the intro. Oh, nice one. Thank you for mentioning it. Glad to hear that you actually know what that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Uh, nice beat. That's like an old, like, SNES beat, is it, or something? It has a kind of 8-bit feel. Oh, it's a Game Boy beat from Pokemon, you know. Oh, right, yeah. I might be right, actually, yeah. I think it's called... Um, Lavender Town. Yes, yes. I love That's Lavender Town. Yeah, with the Sylph scope and yeah. all that sort of shit. Yeah, shout out those old school games. But, um, you know, awesome event this was, the uh, Distinction event, right? Great crowd. Oh, yeah, it was a good event, that, right? Mm-hmm. And in, in terms of, you know, this, worth knowing that Archaic was going out with Steph at the time, the interviewer, um, yep. which becomes, you know, prevalent quite quickly and especially later on as well. Um, and you begin your first, I mean, dedicated to her, you start singing, well, first of all, you start singing David Gray's Babylon. Um, uh, makes the noise for me on Mickey fucking worthless, you say. And the people scream, Mick. You know, <laughs> the, testament. The, the Babylon, isn't it? What, do you know what? I had the, the crowd eating out the palm of my hand in that battle, yeah. man. That is when nobody, that, if you look at my last run of Don't Flop Battles, all right, bars, all, bars and all that shit, whatever, yeah. Nobody had better fucking crowd control than me. Mm. So then, last few, my last, like, I think, Eek, Shuffle T and Marlo versus me and Double L, Archaic, um, Big J versus fucking Mickey Worthless, and even the fucking, like, I was killing the fucking crowds, man. Like, I was absolutely murdering the fucking crowds. So, in the first round against Archaic, man, that was just pure. Like, do you know what I mean? I'm fucking been on NDMA all night. I haven't got no fucking bars. All that singing shit and all that fucking shit, that was just filling up around, really, man. Do you know what I mean? It was just like, I think it's about eight bars in that first round, right? Like, there's no real rapping in that round. Well, there's a couple of bars, but like, it was just, do you know what I mean? Just taking everything that you'd learned and just thinking, do you know what? I'm smashed anyway. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to go up on stage and just do my fucking thing. And then I done that, yeah. And then and then and then it was just like it was the round of the battle, man. Like, do you know what I mean? It's just like I mean the Rice Crispy Squares line as well. Oh, bruv, like, do you know what? I, I'm not gonna I, I, I'm gonna keep it a hundred right now. I'm not gonna go into all the background of sure. all the Steph shit and all that, man, but like it, it, it is just a long it is just what it is sort of thing what you see what, what you see it, what you see in the interview is, is 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 what it is man but there was a reason it came to this point where I would wanted to say this stuff do you know what I'm saying so it was like I ain't gonna go into it all man because it's like this is other people's sort of personal business as well yeah, so. yeah I mean it's not battle related but yeah. I mean it's just kind of yeah. in the yeah. video and it's obviously mentioned in the rounds as well it's quite yeah. funny that I mean yeah, not necessarily funny that you say you're gonna fuck Steph or you have fuck Steph in the first yeah. but yeah. she she says kind of like as if and plays it off quite well I feel like in that little exchange right yeah 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 she, she must have known it was she, she uh, she must have had an inkling it was coming as well, sort of thing. And, you know, he mentioned you have genital warts. <laughs> I don't really want to say anything about it, though. No. Much. She knew something was afloat, in it. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? But they didn't know that I knew that they knew. Nah. You know what I mean? Like, right. hey, it was a long time ago, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's all in the past. Yeah, no, of course, of course, but yeah, it's uh, just, <laughs> I guess as anyone will probably guess by this point, that the interview at the end with Steph, obviously as interviewer, kind of like is quite awkward between the two of you, 
and you kind of metally say like you know oh you know <laughs> you're genuinely like you know annoyed about this sort of thing so and uh, me. I was going out fucking so smashed yeah yeah I walked into that interview thinking oh everything's gonna be calm like everyone loves me <laughs> like she's gonna be well into that but she probably thought that was a great battle like do you know what I mean I walked in thinking everything was nice I walked into the room and they all just looked at me like you piece of fucking shit and I was like oh no this interview ain't gonna be good in it yeah <laughs> and then and then she goes oh blah 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 blah. she's just like I was like wow like I can't believe they're gonna do me dirty like this and then I said to her like you shouldn't put that interview online yeah and he's like no I'm definitely putting it online and I said bruv you're just making me look like an idiot especially because of everything yeah and now ah oh, basically this whole situation is kind of Rowan's fault I don't want to say this is why see this is what I'm saying when I'm saying all this stuff to you about ah oh, I don't want to talk about it it's not because anything happened between me and Steph because it honestly didn't when I said that interview true it didn't say it. nothing has happened to me and Steph yeah but it's kind of Rowan's fault that uh, it was bait basically yeah look I can't even really say it yeah but whatever innit that's why I didn't like Rowan because I didn't even know all of that stuff yeah until Rowan told me oh by the way them to a thing now so that's how I knew then and I thought ah oh, now you're telling me this stuff like oh bro like <laughs> what I can't believe this like shoot the messenger yeah right shit yeah. I don't know man <laughs> it was just a weird thing look, I'm just gonna look it's just gonna sound weird now I'm just gonna say it yeah right yep before everything happened yeah me and Steph I'm not gonna lie yeah Steph will probably say nah 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 but me and Steph used to like but like we used to like, like fancy each other a bit yeah and we was gonna go for a drink when she got the job at the don't flop thing me and I was gonna go out yeah Something may or who knows what would have happened in it. That's what I'm saying, yeah. But then Er goes, no, you two ain't going for a drink here. Yeah? Um, you're don't flop staff now, Steph. I don't want my staff members getting involved with any of the battlers, yeah. Blah 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 blah. Um, you got to be professional. If you get involved with any of the battlers, you're getting kicked. Yeah, I'm gonna have to let you go. With the thing, mm. right? And I said, right, you're really gonna do me like that, yeah? And he said, nah, blah blah. I said, bruv, but like, because me and Steph knew each other from before, don't we? we didn't know each other, but we were chatting online and all that, blah blah blah. We'd sort of exchanged a few like messages, whatever. So then it comes to this thing, yeah? And he said, ah, oh, blah blah blah, yeah. So sort of out of respect for Rowan, out of respect for her not wanting to do a thing, I sort of like called off a bit. But me and her sort of stayed in touch, innit, yeah? Mm. And I kind of still let her know, innit, that like, ah, oh, I still kind of do fancy you quite a lot, yeah? And then, like, so we was always friendly to each other in it, yeah? Do you know what I mean? That's basically what I'm saying, yeah? yeah. So we was constantly friendly. Sometimes I was maybe not, 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 not over the top, but sometimes a bit more than friendly to her and a few little, a few little, a few little tweets on Twitter and a few little inboxes, a few little texts late at night. Oh, would have been nice if something could have blah, blah. Do you know them sort of moments? I didn't know she was like, after, I didn't know that her and RK could do anything, yeah? Do you know what I mean? I don't know how long, I don't know how long they were together for, but, um, when, when we battled. But I knew at that point, like, oh, now I know why he wanted to battle me fucking so much. Do you know what I'm saying? Because he knows that I've been fucking messaging his girl and that. And them two couldn't be public about being together. So I would, if I'd known it was Ark's girl, I would never have fucking stopped. Like, do you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't be messaging Ark's girl if I'd known it was Ark's girl. Do you see what I'm saying? Sure. And so then, like, the day before the battle now, Steph must have said to um, Rowan look by the way I've got something to tell you archaic and me and see each other and I'm coming to the event tomorrow and we're not going to not be we're going to be together at the event we're not going to pretend that we're not together at the event in it yeah so then Earl gets in touch with me he was like oh fucking um, yeah I know um, them two are going out and then I felt you know when you feel stupid now I think oh bruv like, I've been, like, saying all this stuff to his fucking bird and that, yeah? All of this fucking shit and that, yeah? And then I thought, you know what? You kind of ambushed me here, yeah? So I thought, you know what? I'm not... And he goes... He says to me, yeah, but you can't say anything in the battle. I said, what do you mean? He goes, oh, because I'm not supposed to, like... I told Steph I'm not going to say anything, innit? So you're going to have to... Like, you can't say anything in the battle. I said, nah, fuck that, bro, and I'm not doing the battle, innit? 
So I'm not doing the battle, mate. Like, I'm not going up to the stage to embarrass myself, bro. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to feel stupid. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm. So then I thought, you know what? Fuck it. Because Roman's like, you got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. I said, all right, I'm doing it then. All right, but I'm doing it. I'm doing what I want to do. Yeah. So that's why I had no bars, innit? Yeah. Because I thought, I can't be fucking like going into like. So then I thought, you know what? So then in the morning, me and Pedro stayed up all night just bashing MDMA, just fucking sweating our tits off, just being dumb in the hotel and that, going around just being stupid, fucking going into everyone's hotel room. And then I woke up in the morning, I got about two hours kit and just thought, I still felt buzzing in it. I thought, right, today's the day, yeah. I've still got one round, yeah, that I can do, yeah, that I knew that I could do. So the second round is solid, isn't it, yeah? Yeah. And then in the, in the first round, that's when I come with, do you know what? I'm just going to say, oh, fuck your bird, mate. And I'm just going to blow, because I knew what I kind of, I didn't know, I thought he was going to say, I thought he was going to say in the battle, ah, you've been trying it with my girl, she'll never, like, do you know what I mean? Mm. So I thought, I'll go first. I'll say, I fucked your bird. I'll say, I know about you and Steph. I've been banging her. So that's why I thought, like, that's what I thought I say, innit? Yeah, I thought, you know what? I'm not going to let myself get fucking done up here, yeah? Like, do you know what I mean? I didn't know that Ark wasn't even going to fucking mention it, man. I didn't realise he did not have no fuck. He just wanted to beat me to show his bird, look at that mug, innit? That's why he wanted, that's why he wanted to battle me, innit? To get me up on stage and just beat me fair and square in a rap battle, yeah? I didn't realise, because Er put all this shit on me, yeah, about fucking, oh, he's going out with Steph and this and that, I thought, raw, like, do you know what I mean? I've been ambushed, like, they're trying to mug me the fuck off and that, do you know what I mean? So that's why I said all that stuff in the battle. I thought, nah, fuck it. And that's why when I come in the interview and that, I said, raw, I was literally coming in here just to say, like, rare, rare, rare. I got done up to make, like, do you know what I mean? I kind of felt like, like I got done up in that battle. And then afterwards in that, yeah, he goes to me, um, Steph was fuming. Steph was absolutely fuming, innit? Ark was cool, though. Like, I'm not even yeah, playing. Pretty, yeah. Ark actually was. Like, afterwards, he said, look, man, like, fair play, a battle's a battle, innit? Do you know what I mean? You've done what you did, innit? Whatever, blah, blah, blah. He goes, just tell me one thing. Who told you? And then um, I said, ah, like, you know who, innit? And he said, what, who? And then, and then something happened where we got separated, yeah? And then Er grabbed me. He was like, "Don't fucking tell him it was me." And I said, "What am I meant to say then?" He says, "Tell him it was definition." Oh. <laughs> I said, "Why did you say tell him it was definition?" He goes, "Because definition worked out yesterday and put it on Twitter." And I said, "All right." So he said, "So how did you find out?" I said, "Oh, it's definition." So then, fucking me and definition never really liked each other until right. This is the mad thing, yeah. Me and Def never really liked each other, yeah. Hmm. And then the next day, because it was a two-day event. This was the Saturday. On the Sunday, Definition makes a beeline for me at the event. He was like, Mick, we need to have a chat, you know. And I was like, oh, what, what's wrong? He goes, no, nah, seriously, just come around the corner in, in, in private. And I want to... He said, look, yeah, I know me and you have a few crosswords on Twitter. And like, you know, we, we, we don't really particularly like each other's style as a battler. But I'm just after hearing from Archaic that you specifically said it was me that told him, that told you this thing about you two, yeah? About them two. Like, you're trying to make trouble for me now, yeah? You've got a problem with me. What what is the problem? Like, do you know what I mean? Come on, let's 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 clear the air, let's sort this out now, yeah? It was the most fucking like classy way someone has ever handled any like in my whole life, I swear to God, yeah. The way definition handled this situation was so classy, bro. Like it really, it really taught me a few. Like I learned a, a, a few things in this moment, bro. Like you just put it all out there. It was confrontational, but it weren't like do you know what I mean, threatening. It was just like straight up. We need to get to the bottom of this. Why have you done this? And I was like, I'm just going to keep it honest with you, man. Because you you've been honest with me. It's er that said it, innit? Yeah. Er told me to say definitions. So I just fucking said it. And he was like, Yeah. Why did he say that? Blah blah blah. Explain to you what you just. Do you know what I mean? Just explained everything I just said. And he was like, right, then I've got to take out with Er. And then Er just spent the rest of the weekend ducking him, basically. Didn't really give him the time to talk. I, I don't know if they ever really cleared it, but I remember them not... I remember Er <laughs> just trying to avoid that conversation like a fucking... Fucking, he was trying to avoid it like a bullet. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's Er's problem, man. He don't communicate properly. You know what I mean? And is that something you've adapted to, you know, your own league standing now? Because, I mean, we get on to King of the Ronalds and... 
where does that start man from how does it become just from being part of training days in your idea some sort of DF extra league into king of the Ronalds alright Okay, so... <laughs> Big ass, I know. This is how it went, yeah? Yeah. I got kicked out of Don't Flop. Mm. But not ki- I didn't get kicked out of Don't Flop. I got told I'm not going to be used to battle anymore, yeah? Mm-hmm. They wanted to give me some sort of other role. Like... Wow, they just wanted to stop you battling. Yeah, right? They wanted to give me this video. They wanted to give me a series of content. He basically said, look... We want we want to give you some uh, like some content, but we don't want you doing battles anymore because the battle fans ain't fucking with your battles at all, right? So we want to do this thing called Mickey situations, where every week you go into a different situation and we film you. And like for example, the first week we've already found a hairdresser that can do it. Yeah, we're going to train you how to do hairdressing, and then at the end of the week you're going to give like say Bagnell a haircut. And I said like no fucking way. Like, you must think I am some Mickey Mouse fucking Ant and Deck fucking ITV tea time dickhead. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, nah, that ain't fucking me. And they were shocked. They were genuinely, like, they could not believe that, like, like, I remember Liam and Roman were like, really? You're not up for this? And I was like, no fucking way. Like, am I doing it? Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, Nah, like that's I'm a, I'm a fucking rapper, like do you know what I mean? that's what I am. Like I'm not fucking some fucking idiot. Like that's what I do, man. Like do you know what I mean? Whatever you want to say about me, whatever you can say about my battles or or my music, like I am a, I am a rapper. Like that is I don't want to do this corny shit. I want to do like do you know what I mean? So we started just to like just, just agree to disagree on that, right? And then. And then me and Rowan, we we had like quite a big falling out, and we stopped talking for a while, and then and then we made friends again, and then something happened where we went to, we 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 went to Croatia, mm-hmm. and then that was like a, that was a bad idea. I, I I said to him as well, this is a bad idea. Like we shouldn't like I don't know, man. Like I'm not on the card. I'm not battling. Like. I just can't I can't really see what like what I'm going to do there for five days like I really shouldn't come and then he was just like fuck it I'll, like do you know what I mean I'll pay your travel wherever blah 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 I was just like oh fuck it free holiday okay whatever yeah. we went but all I was doing was drinking in the sun for five days straight yeah right. and so like I just got restless in it and eventually me and uh, started fighting again and I did, I did just completely create. I'm not going to lie. I just created a situation. Just started going mental. Started saying all weird shit to him. Trying to <laughs> what? Finish. Like I don't know. I just think you're dickhead. Like do you know what I mean? You just like I don't know. You just like he tried to cuss. You know, he tried to cuss me in front of Quill. Yeah. And I thought, what? You've brought me out here to mug me off about not getting battles to your new little fucking pals. Yeah. I said, don't fucking mug me off. You're a dickhead, blah, blah, blah. I got angry. He said, well, fuck it. I'm going to knock you out now. Everyone sort of was like fucking got in the way in that. And I said, you know what? Oh, fuck all you. Bro. <laughs> I didn't really want to be there no more. I didn't like anyone anymore. I only like Broski at this point, yeah. Everything was all fucked up and that. Yeah, it was all whack. Shouldn't have gone. Hmm. And then I come back and that. <coughs> and then... Um, this is when Don't Flop and King of the Dot, yeah, was still... Like, this is when they was doing this fuck King of the Dot shit, yeah? So this is really and truly how King of the Ronald started, right? Because I came back, yeah, because of all the fans and all that, yeah, I was still loyal to the fucking bone of Don't Flop. People hadn't really clocked i have been kicked out of Don't Flop yet. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, the people on the inside of Don't Flop knew I weren't getting no more battles. But Don Flop weren't trying to advertise the fact they had several ties with me. Sure. And I wasn't really trying to advertise the fact I had several ties with them. I was kind of feeling like I was in limbo at this point, yeah? I didn't know what to do in that, yeah? But I was thinking, oh, I'm still kind of just like... In, at this point, yeah, do you know what I was... I, I was turned into like... You know when Brent turns up in the office, like, just knocking about, like, what the fuck's he doing in the office now? Do you know what I mean? Like, why is he still here? And then I was just thinking, well, why am I still here, yeah? But fucking... Philly Swain comes over now, yeah, from America. Mm. And he he needs somewhere to stay. So he comes to stay with me, yeah. 
and he's there for like seven or eight days, right? And this is when Don't Flop were really, really going in on the fucking and the dot thing, yeah? Like, we don't like them and that, yeah? So I was riding with that, yeah? Because obviously, do you know what I mean? I'm just loyal to the point of being yeah. stupid. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I just do fucking whatever all the everyone else does, yeah? Like, if I'm, if I'm with you, then I'm with you fully, in it, yeah? So I'm saying all this fuck, fucking and the dot shit, yeah? And then I got my... Philly Swain comes over, yeah? And he invents this word, innit? He just, Philly Swain is like this genius dude, yeah? Like... <laughs> He freestyles constantly. Like, he raps all the time. And everything he says is some sort of rhyme or he busts in a joke or saying some sort of metaphor or he's always coming with these little pearls of wisdom, yeah? Mm. And, like, so we're walking down the street, me and Philly, and he was like, here's the thing, yeah? There's no girls, man. He goes, look, it's me, you and Pedro and Double L, and there's no girls, yeah? And just as he said, literally, just as he started to say all this shit about us, yeah, we bump into these girls. And I just recognized this girl, yeah? And I was like, hey, I know you, innit? And she was like, yeah, I do know you. And I was like, where that? She was like, you always come into the McDonald's. And I was like, oh, shit. So we started talking to all these girls and that, yeah? And then Philly was like, come on, man. You can't be trying to move to the girl that works at McDonald's. I was like, bruv, yeah? You said there's no girls. Now we're talking to girls. Now that's not good enough for you. And he goes, bro, nah. And the girl had red hair, yeah? Like, she had this red hair. And he goes, bro, she does look like Ronald to me, yeah? And he's like, bro, I ain't no Ronald fucking McDonald, bro. He goes, you're the Ronald, yeah? He goes, you lot are some Ronalds. And he just started, he just, started just calling us Ronalds. He was like, Pff. and then he just started making up this song. He was like, yo, I'm going to write a song about you lot, man. And he started going, um, I met her in McDonald's. Girl, I ain't Ronald. She said she won a battle. Girl, I ain't Donald. See, Donald Trump reference. All them, see, mm -hmm. Philly's head of the game, yeah? Girl, I ain't Donald. Your pussy smells like hash brown. Pussy smells like hash brown. And we was <laughs> playing, bro. Like, we was dying of laughter. And then from the next day after that, yeah? We just was all saying, Ronald, you're a Ronald. Like, we was all mm. buzzing. You know when someone makes you laugh and you a joke just around, yeah? So we started. Who'd have known that Philly Swain birthed it? Yeah, bro. It was all thanks to him, bro. Yeah. <laughs> he invented shit. the Ronald. So we've made up the Ronald now. And then this is when, um, this is when um, they was doing the King of the Dot thing. Yeah. Mm. Where they were saying fuck it. And then I got my guy, my graphic designer, to make the King of the Ronalds logo, the very same logo that we use to this day with the R just drawn over the D and the thing. Yeah. And I got him to make it for me. And I said, oh, a lot of people have been asking why I'm not battling on Don't Flop no more. Um, it's because um, I've been doing, working on my own battle league. And this, is the, and this is the logo. So I posted the logo up, yeah. And it's King of the Ronalds now, yeah. Because I was trying to say that Don't Flop, are, um, not Don't Flop, that King of the Dot. With the Ronalds. That's the honest God truth. So we just made this logo right. thing, yeah? And then, fucking, um, I shared it, saying I'll big up my brother Mickey on his new league, King of the Ronalds, coming in 20, uh, 2014, or whatever the fucking year would have been, 2015, 2014. Yeah. So then that started to pick up steam. Like, everyone started to retweet it, like, right, Mickey's doing this league called King of the Ronalds and that, yeah? And then I just thought to myself, do you know what, yeah? I'm gonna, I'm gonna find all the rappers, yeah, that I think is a, that I think are dickheads, yeah. I'm gonna book them for this event. I'm gonna tell them that I've booked a venue. I'm gonna say, yeah, be at this venue at this time on this day, yeah. I'm gonna send them to all some mad place, yeah. And then when they all get there, I'm just gonna pull out my camera and just film them and say, ha ha. You're all wankers. You're not battling here. There's no event. No one will come to see you lot rap. You're all dickheads. And I was just going to upload it as a video, yeah, called King of the Ronalds on YouTube, yeah? So that's the next part of the little story, yeah? So I started to promote it a little bit, saying, yeah, if, if you're a rapper that wants to battle at my event, holler at me, innit, yeah? Mm. So now... Now it is actually starting to look like it's actually a real thing. Really, it's a big troll that's going on in my mind. I'm thinking, this is going to be sick. I'm going to troll some of these rappers, yeah? And then I went to the fucking fifth birthday event, right, in Leeds. And I'm telling you, like, everyone was coming up to me saying, oh, congratulations on your new league, big up and all this, yeah? Mm. 
And I started thinking, hang the fuck on a minute. Are you, are you actually just trolling yourself right now? Like, dude. And then O'Shea come up to me and he was like, oh, big up, kid. I'll fucking battle in your league, mate. That's not, not his accent, but you know what I mean? It's, do you know what? As soon as O'Shea said it, yeah, that was the moment. The, pin, the penny dropped in my mind, yeah. I thought, you know what, right? I'm actually going to fucking do this, yeah? So, basically, this is what happened, yeah? fifth birthday weekend happened right and then the thing with disaster and uh yeah happened then right and then uh said to me oh yeah um disaster spat on my face and you didn't do nothing like this that and the third like oh blah 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 like you're not really my friend and I said what like you're not really like I'm not gonna stand up and fight your battles if you ain't gonna fight your own battles and start saying all this shit to him yeah she stopped talking innit yeah now check this out yeah Philly still had a couple more days before he had to he, I think he didn't I didn't think he didn't leave till like the Tuesday I think the event was finished on the Sunday I think he didn't leave till the Tuesday or some shit like that yeah so we all had to travel back to London and that and this was the maddest thing, yeah? Like, my room, yeah, was a state, yeah? It was a fucking, actual fucking state. And before he went, he goes to me, bro, you got to start looking after yourself, man. you got to start organizing. Like, you can't just be eating all this junk food and taking all these mad drugs and, like... He goes to me, listen, look at your room. He goes, how are you going to ever, like, you can't be a CEO of a company if you can't even keep your room in order, man. He's like, seriously, bro, you guys. He, he said to me, um, he said, you know what you need to do, bro? He goes, if you tidy this room, right, if you make this all look brand new, yeah, I promise you, man, like, big things will happen to you, yeah? Like, uh, he goes, fuck, you're going to be on some big shit, bro. Something massive will happen. And then and then you know what happened, yeah? He said, do it, yeah? He goes, anything can happen to you, yeah? He goes, listen, if you do all this shit, I promise you, you're, he goes, you'll be a fucking, you're going to be on the news and everything, bro, but you got to start to, like, take your life seriously, yeah? Bro, tied in my room up top to toe for some reason after he went, yeah? Mm -hmm. Bro, the next fucking week, yeah? The whole thing with fucking James Harper happened, yeah? Shit. Bear down, and then fucking, um... But yeah, the James Arthur thing quickly. What was that? Well, that was the crazy thing, yeah. I got into the beef with James Arthur on Twitter right after Philly said, listen, man, do all this shit and something big will happen to you. So mm -hmm. I did it. Mm -hmm. Fucking happened, yeah. So then fucking... Um, then all of a sudden, I started messaging me in that, yeah, saying, oh... You know, I've got love for you, bro. I'm so proud of you. And I was like, one minute we ain't even talking. Now you're saying all this snaky shit, yeah? I was like, bro, you need to make your mind up. He's like, oh, come round to my girl's house tonight. Like, do you know what I mean? I'm going to chill, talk and all that. So we started talking and that. And that's when I said to him, listen, I've been thinking about this King of the Ronald shit, right? Fucking, I think I should really fucking do it. And blah, blah. Um, this is how it's going to be choking his time this that and the other and he was really keen on the idea he was really keen on the idea do you know what I mean he saw the potential in it so that's that's how it became to be how it was going to be that and then obviously what happened was was after that there was another event in December of that year and what happened was he booked Lo Pesci over for a battle me and Lo Pesci wound up actually having a fight, like actually having a proper fight. Yeah, I heard about that, yeah. Yeah, and then and then basically, like, he basically said, to, I say a proper fight, it weren't like exactly a fucking, do you know what I mean? We came to yeah. blows, and then fucking, um, it was like, come on, man, like, do you know what I mean? I've just got this fucking geezer all the way to the UK, and you fucking punched him up. Like, I don't want you to come to the event today. And I was like, yeah, fair enough. Like, do you know, like, I, I understand, do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. but he never ever chatted to me again after that man that was the end that was the last time he ever chatted to me and I was trying to sort it out with him do you know what I mean I was like look do you know what I mean we've got all this stuff we was in the middle of doing blah 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 just tell me is it one way or the other but he never ever said anything do you know what I'm saying so then I thought fuck it I'll go through with it on my own do you know what I'm saying so that's how the King of the Runnels thing started really because of because of basically Philly Swain making up the word <laughs> Me making up the logo to troll King of the Ron King of the Dot, 
and then loads of people coming up and saying they were feeling it and then O'Shea saying he'd battle for it and once O'Shea said he'd battle I thought right I'm on it man mm mm-hmm. mm and yeah and then the James Arthur thing was what led uh, to wanting to do the league with me and then the, uh, the Lo Pesci thing <laughs> made him not want to do it I guess and then the NKE media thing was the nail in the coffin so just to summarise everything we've just been talking about yeah, that. No, that that was that was helpful man and uh, <laughs> um, you know in these early days of King of the Ronalds who is the staff like is it Bowski Hulk are they there yet or Nah, Hulk was like right on board after the second event, mm. right? In the beginning, the staff was me and then two kids you've never heard of called Ed and Damien. Right. Who had a camera and a computer and said, I will help you get this off the ground. And then Double L said he'll co-host the event with me. And then I booked the venue. And then similar to what's just happened to KoJ event, you book a card and everyone books it everyone's involved and then you know just just before it, you have dropouts and cancellations so the card yeah. didn't wind up being as strong as it should have been there was a lot of fucking last minute changing round and stuff like that who dropped out? do you know I honestly I can't remember off yeah. the top of my head I think I think Willsey was going to battle Callum Boom and Callum Boom dropped out Koje was going to battle somebody I can't remember who Koje battled but he was was meant to battle um, I was going to battle Emerge MC who because I was doing the event in Bromley which is where I was living at the time which is like near, near Croydon and Cro- he's another guy from Croydon and I'm from Croydon and me and him have a bit of history as well where me and him had a little bit of fisty cost one night so people always used to say we should battle so we thought fuck it let's do you know what I mean get the event off and do it there but he dropped out for some reason so then three battles down straight away so then there was like five battles and there was like meant to be another battle. I can't even remember what the card was meant to be, but it was like, a, it was a decent card. It wasn't like a a mega card, do you know what I'm saying? Decent enough turnout as well. Yeah, yeah. And like, it's a learning curve, isn't it? Doing your own league, throwing your own events. You just got to keep going in those early couple of months. Yeah. And then after the second event, Hulk said to me, um... A problem. He said, "Bro, I'm down with this, man." He said, "You know what? If if you need help, if you want me to, if you want someone to do this with, I'll, I'll, I'm down, man." I said, "Yeah, bro, definitely." And then I think quite shortly after he started helping me, he just said, "You know what? I ain't even gonna fucking fuck with Don't Flop no more, you know, man. Like, we'll do it." So like, Hulk was like the first staff member, mm. and then um, oh no, no, sorry, it was uh, Ed and Damien were the first kind of like team members as such but they was really just around helping me get off the ground. And then basically, Pigman Dan, who's the guy who's always yes. made my beats for my music, he got, he's like some fucking genius computer he's whiz. incredible, man. I want to talk about him. Yeah, he's amazing. He, he basically got, I basically said to him, dude, I need help with this editing, but I don't, I haven't got a clue. Like these kids can't, these kids are not able to give the amount of time that we need for this to work. Yeah. To, to this project you know what I'm saying I need you to get I, I need someone who can edit so basically he got a cracked version of M Pro offered a kid who we were already working with fucked around with it for about fucking 12 hours and just fucking knew how to use it after that man because mm. he was already sick of Photoshop and he already knows how to make beats like on like reason and logic and programs like that so he said it's not like too far away so he just learned how to edit quickly the first I can't remember what the first episode he would have edited would have been. It might have been episode five, I think. I think Ed and Damien did the first five episodes. I think they did the first five episodes. And then I think Dan would have taken over after that. I think. Or it might have been the first six. I think, yeah, I think I think Dan edited episode five and six. Or no, six and seven, and then Dan really started to find his feet with the editing when he edited the Beavis and Butthead with the EMC ripping his. Um, yeah, amazing. That's fucking great, man. That was the, that the was, JJC four Metal Gear one as well. It was a crazy edit. Oh man, that was so good, right? Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah. the your, the yours against Max Sherry that's lost themed. Oh right, yeah, that's sick. Dude. Yeah, man, it's just that is crazy. Cool. Yeah, it but, adds a. It adds a lot to our league. It also shows, like, 
it's kind of just sort of giving you an insight into the shit we're into as well mm. you know what I mean like we're fans me and Dan are both massive fucking lost nerds right like when we look back on this in 10 years this is almost kind of like we're sort of just kind of paying tribute to a lot of the stuff that we like because I've always every, every, every creative project for the last 12 years has been me and Dan in some way or another so I think this is great because we've always made so much music together getting to make videos and and, and just being able to just say straight up and down we can just literally cut a chunk of Lost Out and stick it into this fucking thing and it will be our work now like it's kind of cool in a way because it's kind of paying homage but it's also sort of in court, like their work sort of become we sort of become a part of Lost by doing that do you know what I'm saying mm. it's kind of weird like do you know what I mean Beavis and Butthead if you're nerdy enough you can draw the line from Beavis and Butthead all the way down to KOTR now do you know what I mean it's kind of crazy there's a link there man yeah, it's very unique. I love it. And yeah, Pigman Dan's editing, always going to... I want to shout him out as well, because I'm, I'm, it's probably his, him who did it, but at the end of the Metal Gear JJC4, in the credits, special thanks go to Battle Rap Resume, which I just realised recently. So um, shout out to uh, Pigman Dan for including me there. That was great. Uh, yeah, he would have been Dan. I, I normally tell him when I normally tell him to always thank somebody who's commented positively right. in, the, in the special thanks section. Sure, sure. Oh, yeah, that's a nice, yeah, it's a very nice touch, man. And yeah, to give back to the because you know the YouTube users are basically see that's why we need to be more fucking get our fingers out with these episodes, man. Because them episodes they involved the YouTube community a lot more because there was always a comment of the week and there's always uh, the special thanks at the end yeah, where we yeah. thank uh, uh, like a, a battler, a random person, and a YouTube user, a YouTube user. Mm -hmm. So it was like a nice little way of keeping people. Uh, hooked in a way do you know what I'm saying and also it's nice to nice to nice to give back to the kids who are watching to us watching our shit because if they ain't watching there's no point doing this is there really and you know I mean I say this slightly tongue in cheek because I appreciate it's ironic to some extent but I mean how serious is King of the Ronalds in the sense of like do you do you guys have like staff meetings agendas do you plan ahead or is it as ramshackle as it seems um, do you know, real talk we, we don't actually ever meet up no, no. We, we we have a group chat we have we have several group chats which basically involve different people doing different things but uh, the main like the main whatsapp group is me and fucking Boski and Hulk yeah. and that's us basically deciding when we're do when we're doing events and where who we're booking for what event who's getting pushed who's not really getting pushed anymore um, what we can do to freshen up the fucking shit then 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 it's like me and Dan I'm not, not in a disrespectful way here but Hulk and Boski like don't really have any input at all into the channel as such that's that's all right. like, Dan like do you know what I mean that's like it's almost like two separate fucking teams. Do you know what I mean? There's like, there's the team that does the YouTube. There's like the YouTube team. And then there's like Hulk and Boski who are like the events team. But the the events team are, are more hands-on with the sense of they, if I, if I said to Dan tomorrow, oh, who do you think should get the next title shot? He wouldn't have a fucking clue. Do you know what I mean? Like, he would not, he doesn't come out to the events. Hmm doesn't even like do you know what I mean it's like he does all the editing and, and, and what not he does he, he edits all the episodes but the majority of the shit we release is either mobile app or raw app and I upload all and I, yeah. I do all them so he makes the flyers and that um, and the editing and then we got like the Ronald Roundup team which is like basically slicks and and yeah whoever he whoever he is working with on this particular episode because it's just like that's like fan made content which I decided to one is a, a great look for our channel because it, it's, it's, it's it's more content it's another se and it's another series of content for our channel and two again it's another way of giving back to the fans and all the people on the forum and stuff so it's just another way of everyone being able to sort of interact and feel more part of this do you know what I'm saying so they've got that bit handled and recently we've got Blunt Ted um, upgraded onto, as, as an actual staff member now he's basically 
he's going to basically Blunte's going to basically be going to be doing all of the trial like the trial sure. events and um, just like an admin on the fucking um, on the actual KOTR page not the forum just making sure it's always updated every day every time you know just doing just doing them sort of duties there mm -hmm. so it's slowly starting to become more people but what we really need is a camera team now man that's 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 what we're looking at for next year, man. We're looking right. at... Um, we need someone. We, we need, You see, this is the thing. I don't think now, at this point, I don't think I actually do ever want to do multiple angles. I think part of what the King of the Ronalds look is now is one angle, just one shot, just bang. Like, we've got one shot. And if we're going to do any edit into it, we're going to add stuff to it. We're not going to just cut in multiple angles. If I think that is the look of King of the Rounds now, but I would like it shot on a better camera. So I would like a new cameraman or even just an upgraded camera. I just like a cameraman who knows how to use a fucking camera right. instead of bringing my old fucking Canon to the fucking event every fucking week and just giving it to somebody else to hold. Do you know what I mean? So a cameraman with a fucking great camera who committed to every fucking event that would that is the next fucking piece of the puzzle and possibly a photographer as well a photographer isn't as important people, more people can shoot you know just shoot pictures of their iPhones and tag and whatever that's not that's not too bad but a photographer and a camera would be fucking nice as a photographer and a, a filmer would be nice man would it that lose would, would it lose some of the KOTR like charm though see that's why I think um just upgrading the camera and not upgrading to a whole camera team. I think one angle is going to be the look, but I think a better camera, especially in some of the dingy places we shoot, it would just be better if we could get some clearer fucking shots at some of these places, man. Because some of the things we would be shooting, I know, I think... I hear what you're saying about it not feeling like mm. KOTR anymore, but at the same time... You, it might. It, I feel it would enhance it too, because you'd be able to see more of what the fuck was going on in some of these dark fucking places, man. Sure, sure. That's 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 really that's really what uh, we need. But at the moment, I think for our little channel, we're not doing too badly, to be honest, man. I think it's going quite well. Yes, it, I mean from strength to strength. Seriously. Oh, thank you, man. Mm -hmm. We've uh, we, 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 we've all been putting a lot of work into it lately, man. We've been trying harder than ever, and well, um, well inclu including your jaunt to King of the Dot, Mickey. Like you know, the very uh, the very title you ate from to begin with. Like, how the hell did you and Alias come about? All right. Well, one day I saw on on Facebook. Yeah, mm -hmm. I saw Genesis Elijah post a status saying, "Can I get a thousand shares on my video today?" Like I don't think like like I don't think that should be a problem. Like I've got, f however many thousands of people. Let's see if I can get a thousand shares. Yeah, and then I saw it and I thought, you know what? Yeah, that's fucking quite cool, isn't it? Do you know what? People are too shy to say share my shit. Like, and I and I, I read that status and I shared his video straight. I thought, you know what? Yeah, why why can't we all just share his fucking video? Do you know what I mean? So I shared it, and then I realised they were booking. Um, battles for world dom hmm. so i posted on instagram and i made a post saying oh i tagged organic gully and king fly and king of the dot and i said listen man it's long overdue i've come to king of the dot i think i should come world dom um why can't um if you're a real fan of mine tweet all these tweet, tweet any one of these lot that i'm gonna tag in this and tell them that you want to see me over there because like do you know what I mean? They don't yeah. know how popular I could be, yeah? And all my fans got on board, man, and they was all flooding up the, um, you know, the forum, the King of the Dot forum. Yeah, tour back, yeah. They was all posting Mickey, 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 and then, lo and behold, I think it was maybe a day or maybe two days later, um, King Fly messaged me, and he said, listen, man, if you can get yourself out here, bro, you can battle on um, day three. You can mm -hmm. battle on day three, no doubt. And I was like, I'm there. Like, uh, I didn't even have to think. Like, I was like, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Sit. 
So we went, we went, we went, we went, we went, we went out there. Like, I couldn't believe how fucking well received we are out there, man. They fucking love King of the Ronalds out oh, there, man. bro. They fucking love it. And it was like, as you say, it's just such a trip that, like, it's. Hey, I don't want to sound full of myself in that, but like, I think it's. I think it stands as quite. It stands as like, what's the word? It's like testimony of how, how dope King of the Runnels is really. That the very thing we're taking, we took the piss out of. Do you know what I mean? The King of the Dot logo. Even their fans of it now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, do you know what I mean? And it was like, it was started as kind of hate towards them. To be honest, man. Like, do you know what I mean? It was hating, really. It was hating. It is hating. I'm admitting it. It was hating, and it? it was that was hating. But like now. I fucking love King of the Dot, man. They fucking put me the fuck on. Like, they gave them, they really, they've been a big part of our kind of rise over the last four, four to six months. That have, you know, it's kind of like, it's gone from being like a joke to, oh, hang on, it's kind of being taken seriously. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of being taken very seriously. And then the next thing you know, we got Lost One hosting the event in Minneapolis. Yeah. And then we fucking real deal versus reverse live is the fucking co-main event with Mickey Worthless versus the Vesh like on the same fucking bill and shit like it's starting to not be a joke now and then going back there back back to Canada went to Vancouver and they and they said they treat King of the King of the Ronalds as an event sponsor and put the fucking logo on the flyer do you know what I mean like they didn't have to do that man that's that's love like do you know what I mean so they're they're they're, they're backing it man like we got fat like we get love all over the place it's crazy like disaster fucking loves King of the Ronalds always tweets well, and always but he tweets about it and always bigs it up and that and it's like it's sick because the battlers yeah hmm. who I'd want to be fans of King of the Ronalds are and that's pretty dope man because that means that I'm I know that I'm, I, I, I don't like I know it is about the fans, yeah? But from the, like, King of the Rollins is kind of, I'd, again, not trying to sound full of myself, King of the Rollins is kind of a more, it is, there's a lot more artistry that goes into our, into our league. Yeah, that's fair. And then, then the other leagues. Like, we, the way we approach it, the, the like, the, mm. we, the artwork and, and, like, there's an art to comedy, do you know what I mean? And there's an art to, like, so, Ah, I don't even know what I'm trying to say, man. As an art, like, dude, I'm even fucking getting tripped up on my fucking words now, bro. But fucking, <laughs> what the fuck was he even saying? No, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's cool, man. It's cool. But, you know, I guess it's just worth reflecting that King of the Ronalds, it seemed to have been growing throughout the entirety of 2015 into 2016, but capping it off with, like you say, the Minneapolis, the double King of the Dart appearances, the embrace by the international, like, you know, well, like other than better camera equipment and, and stuff like that, like in a sort of league sense, where do you see 2017 for King of the Ronalds? Well, we got some plans that we've already got in place for some pretty big shit. I don't want to jinx it and talk about it too much. No, no, of course. But I just, yeah, I mean, just in terms of that's, that, it's good to hear then that you've got big stuff. Well, uh, in a nutshell, we've got, m we've got more plans for more international stuff, mm -hmm. which should be making our league grow more if it all comes to a pass how it should do we're going we're gonna we're gonna be working we're gonna be working more we're gonna be we're working with Lush One on something and we're working with No Coast on a couple of things mm. so and also man we got a lot of good shit coming next year, man. When I think about it, we got the fucking, we got the hookup. We, we're going to do an event in Barcelona next year. Oh shit! Work on some, um, we've started work on an event in Barcelona. We've briefly, 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 briefly started work on some other cool shit with King of the Dot. Mm. I 
ain't going to say too much about that. I really, really want to say it all, man, but I don't think it's going to be a good look to say anything just No, no, yet. no, of course, of course. But yeah, yeah, I mean, we can sort of, you know, we can imagine and that would be fucking awesome, man. That's, that's so good to hear. Hey, do you know what I think we can say? I'm going to go out on a limb and say this, and if it comes back and bites me in the ass, I think um, then so be it. Yep. But we're going to, we, 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 we're going back to Scotland next year with um, Iron Bars. Mm. Um, and we're um, we're doing a thing at a Ghostface Killer event um, in in March. Mm. But work on a, an event in Norway. Boski's just started working with somebody on an event in Norway. We've got the Spanibis Cup, the the big weed event in Spain that happens in Barcelona. Right. All the growers. Um, we've got a big a big fan of, of Battle Rap, who's also a grower who I've been in touch with for years now who's basically just put put this idea to an event to me basically in 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 a in a coffee shop environment that he can hook up blah 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 so obviously straight away we're going to we're going to go for that yeah. um possibly something again in Denmark I'm not sure I definitely want to get to Wales next year because I personally have never done a battle event in Wales or been to one sure. so I need to I, I would like to do that just mm-hmm. just because we've done, we've, 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 we're trying to look after everyone in the UK, do you know what I mean? So we're trying to reach around now. Well, Canela's headliner, surely. That would be, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, I don't even know why I didn't even think of that. It's just get fucking Canel to set an event up. Yeah, exactly, why not? Like, I'm sure he knows those are good MCs or spoken word poets who want to go. It doesn't have to be a crazy card or anything. Like, that could be, uh, that could be awesome, man. But, um, Mick, well, uh, you know, there's just... <sighs> There's just so much to talk about, isn't there, really, that just going on throughout all these battles and we could go on and many, many stories. But I guess, you know, we'll wrap up as we always do with a few quick fire questions. Uh, the first of which, do you, ha- do you have a favourite Don't Flop battle? Yeah, DK. Uh, no, I mean in general as well, or is oh. that your favourite? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me versus DK. Right, my favourite Don't Flop battle is probably... Chronicle versus Flex Digits, right? Or, or possibly. Nah, I say Chronicle versus Flex, Flex Digits is my favourite time and, and, and just just before we get to the next question, what happened to the Chronicle Archaic thing? I was meant to ask you earlier. Oh right, yeah, it was a, that. That would have been my favourite nine flop battle, and yeah, yeah, that's my favourite nine flop battle when it's not online. But um, it got um. Um, someone put a privacy complaint in. Mm. Someone put some sort of privacy complaint, or some somehow somebody got it removed. It got removed for some reason or other. I can't remember what it was. And you blame that on Ark in the in the, the battle against him. I said it against Ark. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I I, I actually didn't believe that for a second. That it was him. Right. <laughs> It was just something to say, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, no, I mean, it was definitely, uh, you know, crowd grabbing, but Ark himself flipped it saying it was like a six year old angle or something like that. So I know, it was just clutching at straws. <laughs> I mean. uh, your your favourite King of the Ronalds battle, Mickey? In, oh, I mean, if, online, I mean, oh. Do, do you mean to what like with an edit or just the actual battle itself uh, let's say battle itself probably JP versus Technico mm. I think that was one of my favourite but my, that, that's probably my favourite uh, King and Ronald's battle that was the first battle I saw where I thought right these two guys are nothing to do with Don't Flop and I've just watched a battle on King of the Runnels that was easily as good as anything they put out recently. Do you know what I mean? That's when I thought, right, we can reach levels. So that's when I really started to... So I'll say that one. Yes, My favourite one in the edit is probably EMC versus Ackers, to be honest. Right. What is that? What is the theme of that one? Just completely throwing Ackers under the bus, basically. <laughs> quite, quite sadly... It was kind of cool. We didn't execute it properly. We didn't execute the edit quite what I wanted to do. Mm. But um, the first round just goes into really mad slow motion and slowly turns into black and white as he's rapping because it's like so boring. And then the second round, it just sort of like, it goes black, like it blinks a couple of times and then goes black like you're falling asleep. 
And then it wakes up in the middle of the last round. It just starts fast forwarding. <laughs> I like that edit. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, do you have a favourite King of the Dot battle, Mickey? Yeah, Pat Staver as Hallahan. Yeah, that comes up quite a lot, actually. That's a, that, that's yeah, a good it is, it, it's fucking the best one, man. Uh, URL? Uh, not really. No? To don't be honest. watch it. No, I don't, I don't watch URL, to be honest, man. Oh, I don't really watch URL, and I don't really watch... Uh, I mean, I've seen Kapat's Day versus um, Hollahan, but I've seen... Um, URL, though? Mm. Mm. Uh, I don't know, dude. No, no, it's cool, man, it's cool. Um, Has Slain ever battled on URL? Who, sorry? Philly Swain ever battled on URL? Uh, maybe. I'll check. No, I don't think he has, no. I don't, I don't think, know. I don't think he has, actually. I'm just just searching it now. Uh, no, he hasn't. <laughs> URL, man. The battles are just too long, bro. Like, yeah, I see. Yeah. They just They just bore me. And I'm just going to keep it 100%, yeah? I ain't really too obsessed with all the American slang and all the words and all that do you know what I'm saying so like when I hear a lot of the white dudes rap yeah some of the stuff I miss yeah when I hear a lot of the black dudes rap I miss a lot of the bars like I'll be real with you a lot of it goes right over my head innit yeah so I haven't really watched too much URL stuff man I'm racking my brain now trying to think of a battle that I've seen on URL that I say is my favourite fucking battle that I've seen from there but it's never really been like that into it, man. No, I mean, you know, fair enough, fair enough. I'm sure a lot of URL girls aren't King of the Rolls fans for some reason, you know. <laughs> for real, bro, for real. Uh, so, final two questions. The first one being, what's your favourite film? Eight Mile. <laughs> Same as Max Sherry. Eight Mile Road, really? Yeah. Eight Mile is my favourite film of all time, bro. I love it. Good pick and f- and finally um your favorite musical band or artist that are in no way hip hop related oh oh this one always gets me. right let's go through the, the, the should I say or oh. I'm gonna say anal cunt you know right I am yeah I think so. I need to check them out. I'm going to say either oh. anal cunt or I'm going to say oh man this is tricky bro. The most important this is the hardest question you've asked me right now. <laughs> say fucking anal cunt man or I'm going to say anal cunt or I'm going to say oh yeah I'm going to say anal cunt okay. man. And what's, what style of music are they? Grindcore. Right. right okay. <laughs> They're grindcore, man. Yeah, I need to check them out. I know the name. I know the sort of style of music, but yeah, I don't know them specifically. But, uh, right. but, but yeah, just to, just to wrap up, man, uh, how do people get at you, social media-wise, YouTube, that sort of stuff? King of the Runnels on YouTube. Mm. Type that in, the search bar. That's everything on there, all the battles. Uh, King of the Ronalds. dot bandcamp. dot com or bandcamp. dot King of the Ronalds. dot com. One of the two for the music, for all my music. On Twitter at Mickey Worthless. On Facebook, Mickey Worthless Brennan. But or if you want to add the King King of the Ronalds forum, it's called Back Your Talk. And I think that's about it, man. Fucking King of the Ronalds merch at Big Cartel if you want to buy a t shirt. Mm. And yeah. That's me, bro. That's that's it, man. Thank you so much. This has been great. Mate, no doubt, man. I've enjoyed this, right, mate. Right. Thank you for having me. Man. No, no worries at all. Uh, take it take it easy, man. Look after yourself. Right. Bye bye, yeah.